It will, Tom, to some be a very eerie scene reminiscent of last year during the regular season when Robbie Washington slipped down at the goal line and disastrous field position eventually spelled big trouble for the Broncos. There's the play, uh, the uh, meeting history. This is the 20th meeting between the Broncos and Wolfpack. All started back in 71. Nevada got a controversial win here in 1973 to spoil an unbeaten season for Boise State. And uh, the Broncos won, of course, November 10th up in Boise. In Reno, in Mackey Stadium, the Broncos are 5-5. Five and five. Of course, last year, an identical 30-14 to 14 score down here in Reno. Broncos' last win in Skip Hall's first year, 1987. And Mike Black and uh, certainly his counterpart, Kevin McKelvey, will be called upon today to make some big kicks. It's very likely. Broncos they... sending Kenny Keel and Chris Thomas back deep to receive, so it's great to see Chris Thomas in this situation. He has not returned to kick, I believe, since the Stephen F. Austin game. Straight ahead is his best way to run right now with that groin injury that he has. And so the Broncos coach is perhaps feeling like they can take advantage of some of his uh, experience in a non-threatening situation. We're just about ready to go. Now Kevin McKelvey to kick it off for Nevada. And it will be Chris Thomas from his own three-yard line. Straight up field, across the 20, and driven down at the 24-yard line. So the Broncos starting from their 24, moving from your left to right across your television screen. Across the offensive line for the Broncos, Cook, Giacomazzo, Porter, Ramos, and Duncan, the same starting lineup. Mike Verdon, at quarterback, Sean Sanders is in right now at tailback, replacing Chris Thomas and Bart Pohl. Tinkstad, the fullback, receivers are white, Stainer and Hefner. Broncos with a full house backfield. That is uh, Ryan Teal in there along with Tinkstad and Sean Sanders. And the toss to Sanders, trying to get outside across the 25, 30 to the 35 yard line. And power running from Sean Sanders, who has stepped in. A sophomore out of Renton, Washington, filling in for the still hobbling Chris Thomas. Dave Norman finally makes the stop as we look at the defense for Nevada. Holbert, Ship, Wells, Drehaus across the uh, defensive line. And Mantia, Clafton, and Sullivan, the linebackers, and across the secondary, Ellison, Sims, Carey, and Marion. Although there are some changes, we have Dave Norman in a one linebacker spot, and I believe we have George Buddy in also on the D line. Broncos with first down now across their 35, and the double wide receivers, Burton back to attempt to first pass it's completed to Larry Stainer out across the 40 and he fights his way out to the 43 yard line a gain of eight very important that the Broncos be methodical and that what that his has been methodical that first run by Sean Sanders very important to Sean's confidence and now the Broncos throwing to the tight end throwing to Larry Stainer who has been open much of the year and they're really they've really been taking advantage of Stainer here since the Montana State Victory. Second down and two from the 43. Again, the Broncos with the full house backfield. Tight end Ryan Teal is a blocking back in front of Sanders, who is hit and dropped for a yard loss. Kevin Sims coming up from his strong safety spot and delivering a blow on Sean Sanders. So as as confidence building as his first run was, this is a little demoralizing. Sanders trying the right side here, and look at that hit by Kevin Sims. That that is the emotion that is running rampant on the Nevada sideline. Wolfpack with four first-team All-Big Sky selections. One of them, number seven, Brock Marion, has just left the field. Broncos now with third and three. The toss to Sean Sanders. Nothing there, and he's going down at the 44. So the Boise State will have to kick it away in their first possession. Broncos do move the ball well, though, on their first possession against an extremely fired-up Nevada defense. So that's got to be a good sign for the Broncos. By picking up 15 or 20 yards, you also win the early field position struggle. And now Mike Black with a chance to kick the Wolfpack deep into their own territory. Number 11 is Tremel Taylor, who is the first team Big Sky return specialist, averaging 18 yards per return in the postseason. Ellison Black standing at his 30, gets it away. Good kick, kicks it away from Tremel Taylor. Ellison at the 25 across the 30 and short of the 35 yard line he goes down mentioned the Keith Stein Blue Thunder marching band 80 strong has just marched in they're taking their seats and uh, Dave Wells wanted me to say hello to all the band members left behind we'll talk more about them as you set the starting lineup for Nevada the offensive line Wells Maxwell McCone Branca and Perdanish 
for uh, Nevada. Gatlin, the quarterback, Smith and Whalen, the running backs, the receivers are Ortega, Benning, and Tremel Taylor. And the Wolfpack now first down at their 34-yard line, their first possession of the afternoon. The sophomore Fred Gatlin, and they run right at Eric Helgeson, who's blocked away from the play, gain of about two. But a great job by Anthony Hernandez to come in and make the stop. Uh, as you see, the Bronco defensive alignment, Gilkey, Anderson, Hernandez, and Helgi across the front. O'Connor, Russell, and Langens, the linebackers, and across the secondary, George, Brown, Johnson, and Robinson. Solid secondary that's played so well at 26 interceptions for the Broncos. Nevada with second and two. This is way across the 40 to the 41 yard line. Be about three yards, two or three yards short of the first down. Good burst past the line of scrimmage. You, you see Nevada's offensive line pulling right and then Whalen going in behind them to get good yardage. Pretty good hole in there. He's a 5'10", 200-pound senior out of Sacramento. Ran for nearly 700 yards in the regular season and carried 55 times for 211 yards and six touchdowns in the first two playoff games. Third and three. Gatlin rolling. Quick talk. In the zone was Ross Ortega. Ortega takes it into Bronco territory to the 40-yard line of Boise State. Ortega set a Nevada record last week, 15 catches, 247 yards, and a touchdown, a big touchdown against Furman. 16 receptions in the first two playoff games for Ortega. A first down for Nevada here at the Bronco 40-yard line. Whalen for about three. Whalen knifing in there behind center Mike McCone. And actually, he bursts all the way down to the Bronco 35. So, the Nevada doing exactly what it wanted to do in establishing things with Ray Whalen as Tom Williamson comes off injured and Joe King replaces him. It'll be second and five. I mentioned the, the uh, Bronco Keith Stein Blue Thunder marching band. Uh, the band members who left behind are performing the Messiah as we speak. and. There is a Christmas performance tomorrow night at 7.30 at the Morrison Center. Second and five. Whalen, close to the first down. This is what the Broncos did not want to see. And that's Ray Whalen getting five yards a pop. Two carries and another first down for the University of Nevada. Great cut and great blocking in there by right guard Bill Branca. You see Sean Anderson filling and Scott Russell waiting. Third and less than a yard for Nevada at the Bronco 31. First big play of this game. Whalen gets the call and he is hit at the line of scrimmage and we'll see what kind of a spot they get. He's close. He has to get to uh, about a foot outside of the 30 yard line. Boy, he was tipped over and really gets up shaken. Should be a first down. Boy, they are running right, and it is Scott Russell who makes the stop with some help from Tim, Tim O'Connor, who got Whalen up into the air initially. But they're running at the left side of the Bronco defensive line. There you see it by the length of the football. It is a first down for the Nevada Wolfpack. Wolfpack started this drive on its own 34-yard line. And they are driving. They converted two third downs so far. You may get an occasional shot of the Bronco mascot socks with Cindy Roberts in the saddle. The Marriott Food Services working with the BSU Rodeo Club to pick up the cost of transporting socks down here. Gatlin looks like he's checking off. First and 10 at the 30. This is Whalen trying to get outside. Not going to do it and will get just a yard to the 29. Scott Russell and Tim Langens. Once again, making the stop for the Broncos. And now this is the first second and long of the day for Nevada. So we'll see how the Wolfpack plays it. Here you see Anthony Brown coming into your picture, but Whalen from ground level tripped up once again by Scott Russell. Second down and nine. Tremel Taylor comes to the near side. Ross Ortega wide to the right at the top of your screen. That's Taylor in motion with Whalen, the lone setback behind Gatlin. Play action fake in the flat to Ortega, out of bounds at the 25. Short yardage, so it sets up a big third down play at the Bronco 25-yard line. 
Third and five, the BSU defense will try and stiffen here and force a field goal attempt. Play action this time by Gatlin, and Whalen has set that up. It froze the Bronco defensive line for just a moment. Ortega ran a little out and just stood there at the 25-yard line on the sideline waiting for the throw. One touchdown in the playoffs. They've done an outstanding job. Third and five, handoff to Whalen, who's hit. Breaks free, gets to the 22-yard line, and it'll be fourth down for Nevada. Kevin McKelvey, their kicker, he is 25 dependable. of 29. 25 of 29 in the regular season. Broncos get a great rush here, and I think they were expecting pass. He just barely eludes Sean Anderson and Tim O'Connor. That's his tackle-breaking ability, a la Devin Pierce, but Broncos stay home to finish him off and force McKelvey to come on the field. It will be a 39-yard field goal attempt. He is 7 of 8 from inside the 40. Nevada Wolfpack trying to get the early score. Kick is a low one, but it is through the uprights, and Nevada scores with 8.02 left first quarter. The Wolfpack leading the Broncos here in Reno. They call him the little general here in Nevada. Chris Hall trying to take the Nevada Wolfpack to the national championship game for the first time in his very successful career here as head coach and now athletic director as well of the University of Nevada Wolfpack athletic program. Boy, and he is keyed up today. Look at him, just, just watching him on the screen there. You can see him, he marches up and down the sidelines, wears a little path on the outside of the chalk. First year he had this program, he brought the players in for the spring game riding on a tank borrowed from the National Guard. He's, a, he's an extremely talented motivator. This is Chris Thomas from the 10-yard line. Out to the 29. The Broncos will have good field position again for their second offensive possession of the afternoon. The Broncos will accept that. Coming on for the second possession, Son, Sean Sanders still in the game. Broncos started their first play from scrimmage in the power formation with Ryan Teal in the backfield, and they got 11 yards from Sanders on that, but they're, they'll be in uh, their conventional offense now with Tingstad and Sanders in the backfield. Bronco defense doing what its primary task is, prevent touchdowns. So they trail 3 nothing after the field goal by McKelvey. Boise State back on offense. Burton going deep for Winky White. Got it at the 45 and down at Nevada's 40-yard line. Broncos making a statement. In the paper it said the Broncos must pass, can't pass, can't win. Who did they pass on that time? All-America Bernard Ellison. One-on-one -on -one with Winky White against the All-American and Winky comes down with the catch. Opposite side of the field of a similar play on the Broncos opening possession in November. So the Broncos now in Nevada territory for the first time. First and 10 at the Wolfpack 41 yard line. Burden to throw again. Has time. Tinkstad over the middle for six to the 35 yard line. Boy, that was a big play to Winky White. The Broncos needed that. And now maybe they can play field position a little bit if they do not get into the end zone. Certainly an early score, as we noted in the pregame comments, would be big for Boise State to take this 19,000 crowd out of the game for a while. On second down, Broncos in power formation now, Teal up to the line. Double tight ends, Teal and Stainer with Sean Sanders taking the handoff from Burton. Hit at the line of scrimmage, gains about two to the 38-yard line. So it, it will be third and short. Broncos will be facing third and two from the 38. Here's the give to Sean, the sophomore. Nevada with four first team, all Big Sky defensive players. Tackle Neil Holbert, linebacker Matt Clafton, and in the secondary, both Brock Marion and Bernard Ellison. Third and two for the Broncos. snap and he may get the first down anyway as he dove forward to the 36. I don't think he got a good spot though from the official. Yeah, he's very close. He did not get a good spot so it looks like he's going to be a micro inch short here. Great job by Mike to get his hands on that ball and get back up close to the first down and what will the Broncos do here if they do not have the first down? They've got to kick the field goal. It's a long one, the 48-yarder, which would equal Mike's longest on grass, off, without a tee, so it's a decision to make. Well, the offensive unit's still out there, and they are about a foot short, is the indication. And they will go on fourth down. 
Russ Lindsley checks in as a third tight end. Well, the gambling Broncos, who went for it on their own 19 last week, go for it on the baddest 31 here. Broncos with double tight ends, and Ryan Teal has the power back for the third tight end. Tinkstad and Sean Sanders, the other backs behind Verdon. Tinkstad over the top and across the 30 for the first down. Boy, he earned that, too. He had to pay for it. Bernard Ellison coming up. And Nevada had really stacked the line of scrimmage with a 10-man front, too. So I'm sure Verdon was tempted to check off out of that. So the Broncos with a fresh start now. First down just inside the Nevada 30. 5.58 left first quarter. Broncos with their second possession of the afternoon. Double wide men now. Winky White to the left. Terry Hefner at the bottom of your screen. Verdon to throw. That's Winky to the 22-yard line. Broncos will take that. Gives him a second and short. And Verdon sharp here in the early going. He played so well the last couple of weeks. I thought he was just near perfect last week against Middle Tennessee State. No interceptions. 23 of 33. 250 or 236 yards, and here's Mike with great protection from the offensive line. Dave Cook, the great block at left tackle. Winky trying a little spin move, and he had six if he had, he could have made that. Second and two at the Wolfpack 22-yard line. Sheldon Forehand, the lone wide man with double tight ends. Fumble, ball loose. Nevada has it, I believe. It was a flea flicker that went awry. David Tingstad was trying to pitch back to Verdon and was hit. So the first big emotional swing of the afternoon goes Nevada's way. Watch closely. Tingstad falls down as he gets the ball. He was trying to pitch it back to Verdon, I believe, on the flea flicker. We'll take a break and be back with 5.02 left first quarter. Nevada taking over after the first turnover of the game. Larry Vanilli and Tom Scott with you again from Reno, Nevada, where the Wolfpack about to go back on offense after the first turnover of the afternoon, something the Broncos could ill afford to do. Now it's up to the defense, which has been called on to do so much the last couple of weeks. Boise State trailing 3 0, five minutes left, first quarter. Ray Whalen hit at the line of scrimmage and down after a yard or two game. He got around a block by Tremel Taylor on Tim Langens and then almost got away from Scott Russell for big yardage. Here's the give. Tremel Taylor comes up on it from the back of Tim Langens and uh, Scott Russell from behind with the ankle tackle. So a gain of two, second and a long seven, short eight. Gadlin checking off. Three wide receivers. That one straight back to throw. Ball deflected and incomplete. It's tempted for uh, Trumel Taylor out across the 45-yard line. Went up into the air a little bit. Could have gone into the uh, arms of Rod Johnson. And there is the opponent for the winner of this game. The Georgia Southern Eagles, who have made a habit of reaching the national championship round, will be there waiting on their home field in Statesboro, Georgia, next Saturday afternoon. The winner of this game playing the Eagles for the national championship seven days hence. And they just exploded in the second half on their home field. 9-7, they were up at halftime. Third and seven or eight for Nevada. Gatlin to throw again. Has Taylor wide open at the 35-yard line for a first down. Fans want a late hit on Kenny Keel. We couldn't hear the whistle up here. Kenny Keel back into the lineup. Yeah, on defense for the first time since the Montana State game. Pinpoint pass to Taylor. Split the zone. And here's the... Well, he did, did not really make contact. Dove over. Dove over the top. First down Nevada at the 35-yard line. Wolfpack on the move. Ray Whalen hit after a gain of a couple. Now they're starting to make Whalen work for it now. His last carry, two and a half yards. This one will be about two. Very important for the Broncos to do that, to take away that running game and give Nevada second and long situations, force them to go to the air and try to get that pass rush. Gatlin has not been hurried yet. 
Try to give you an isolated look occasionally, perhaps, at uh, how Eric Helgeson is faring against Tony Wells, the 6'7", 260-pound senior that was literally undressed by Helgeson at Bronco Stadium a month ago. Just ate him up. Little movement, and it probably cost Nevada five yards. Looks like it might have, might have been the right guard, Bill Branca, who moved. And that's, uh, that's five important yards for the Broncos. Yes, it is right guard Bill Branca. And the Broncos wisely make contact. Legal procedure on the offense, still second down. Floyd Dawson, the referee, you've seen, in, seen his name and heard it throughout the season. This is a, a Big Sky crew, Richard Hall, Dennis Peterson, Frank Uregan, John Maloney, and Bob Rowling are the other officials working this game this afternoon. First penalty of the afternoon gives Nevada second down and about 12 from their 37-yard line. And to Whalen, who takes it out to the 39. Wolfpack catches the Broncos off guard a little bit with the draw. Now here's, here's uh, how Eric is faring against Tony Wells. Eric looping from the outside, but Wells going straight ahead because of the draw play. And uh, Bill Branca coming over to make a block on Eric. So a big third and six for the Wolfpack. Two and a half minutes left, first quarter. Nevada leading 3 0. Broncos hustling around to make the defensive alignment against this four three wide receiver set. Gatlin to throw, has time. Man open, pass completed at the Bronco 40. That's Tremel Taylor. What a great catch in coverage by Tremel Taylor. Kenny Keel and Rod Johnson had him sandwiched. Taylor has such great leaping ability, and the key here, look at the protection for Fred Gatlin. That's what Nevada has to do. And the great leaping grab and holding on with a double hit by Keel and Johnson is no small task. Another big gainer, another first down for Nevada, and they're back in Bronco territory at the 40 with 2.03 left first quarter. Clock moving. Gatlin throwing deep to the end zone, overthrows Taylor. Tim Langens and Rod Johnson had been beaten by Trammell, but it's, it really sailed on Gatlin. There's no win, so that was not a factor on that throw. But notice the protection that Taylor, uh, that Gatlin is getting here in the early going. That is opening everything up for Nevada. Broncos are starting to get a handle on the uh, Wolfpack running game, but the air game is going to demand a pass rush here pretty soon. Gatlin, a 6'2 sophomore out of Compton, California, completed 54% during the regular season. That has dipped to 48% completions in the uh, postseason. Handoff here to Way Ray Whalen, who is hit and pulled down by Rod Johnson and uh, Scott Russell. Gain of about three. Russell, the first man to get there. They've been running right much of the day, going at Todd Gilkey and Sean Anderson on the left side of the Bronco defensive line. Get around Tim O'Connor this time, but... Uh, well played by Johnson. Exactly. Coming up as a safety. That's the way you play the sweep. Clock still moving. 120 left first quarter and uh, another big third down for Nevada's offense. They are three out of four so far with the only score of the afternoon, a 37-yard field goal, 39-yard field goal by Kevin McKelvey. Gatlin to throw over the middle. Pass completed. First down inside the 30-yard line. That time Nevada sent three receivers long to clear out that middle zone. One of them out of the backfield, Eric Smith, went long along with Tremel Taylor and Ross Ortega. That allowed the wingback Joe King to come up underneath and get a big first down for Nevada at the Boise State 29. Nine yard gain and another fresh series of downs for the Wolfpack who go with a tight formation now and a quick snap and slipping down in the backfield is Eric Smith and he is marked down at the 32 yard line after a loss of three. Wolfpack fans want another late hit call. But well, no I think play. they were upset mostly at the spot by referee Floyd Dawson who rushed in there and oh, spotted I the see. ball exactly where he slipped down. That's where the knee touched, and a good call by Floyd Dawson back at the 32. Nevada controlling the ball here in the first quarter with uh, just seconds left. Second down and 13, 20 seconds to play in this opening period. Nevada flooding the near side with three wide receivers. 
Gatlin rolling this way. And the throw completed to Ross Ortega, who's pulled out of bounds at the 25-yard line. As soon as Ortega caught that ball, he looked up to see where Anthony Brown was. Anthony Brown was there, but once again, Nevada throwing underneath and outside the Bronco coverage. Gain of about eight. Third down and a long five yards. This is where, just about where the Broncos stopped Nevada on their first possession. Taylor and Ortega both wide to the right. King wide to the near side, the short side of the field. Gatlin back to throw. No pressure yet and overthrows King at the 12-yard line. So the Wolfpack will be facing another field goal situation as the Bronco defense rises up once again. Despite that misfire, it was uh, just an overthrow by Fred Gatlin, and Gatlin now 6 of 9 for 63 yards as it comes right into your southwest Idaho, eastern Oregon living room here on Channel 7. Well, that's a great picture right there. You see a disappointed Joe King head off, and Kevin McKelvey now, who hit from 39 earlier in this quarter, will try one from 43 yards. Out of the hold of Tom Williams. Uh, the snap is good, kick is down. He has connected two field goals by Kevin McKelvey, and Nevada takes a 6-0 lead as the first quarter clock expires. We'll be back to Reno, Nevada to continue play here with the Wolfpack, leading the Broncos by six. Let's take a two-minute break here. Larry Manili and Tom Scott with you again from Mackey Stadium in Reno, Nevada. We've played a quarter. The Broncos trailing the Wolfpack 6-0 in a game that will launch the winner into the national championship game next week in Statesboro, Georgia against the Georgia Southern Eagles. Chris Thomas from the one-yard line, straight up field and wrestled down as he crosses the 20-yard line. What a hit. The groin injury is the least of Chris Thomas's worries there. Nick Harker, a backup linebacker, coming from the look at, well, that tells the story. Just absolutely necktied at the Bronco 20 yard line. That is called clotheslining somebody, and he really took a shot. Broncos back on offense now, turned it over deep in Wolfpack territory, their last possession. Thomas Chris Thomas tailback. in a tailback. From the 20, Verdon to throw. Under pressure, gets away, has some room, and slips down after gaining about two. We've got Dave Cook down on the field at the near hash mark. And that's bad news for the Broncos. Broncos big left tackle, an honorable mention, all big sky. 6'7", 265 pound junior out of Tumwater. And here, come, here comes the pack on first down. He bumps into Carl Ramos. And then is able to get away. We weren't able to see how see how David Cook was injured. I think if we can get that, well, Cook I think was piled into from behind. We'll break right here with as they help him off. 14:34 left, and uh, we'll be right back. Broncos back on offense now with second and eight. Uh, Greg Alexander out of Boise High School has replaced Dave Cook at left tackle for the Broncos at their own 22-yard line. Burton with a big rush, drops the football, picks it up, gets it away, and Bart Hull down the sidelines. And has a first down before going out of bounds at the 35-yard line. What a play by Mike Verdon. He had no chance as Nevada was blitzing. And we'll see it again. Mike Verdon uh, says hi to the south end zone at the end of that play. And I think you saw very quickly Dave Cook back into the lineup now. Right, you can see Matthew Claff. Then on the blitz, the ball touches the ground, but Mike doesn't. He gets the ball off to Hull, and the Broncos get a first down out of it. And it's very fortunate for Nevada that Brock Marion reacts the way he does, or Bart Hull runs about 80 yards for a touchdown. First down. Straight ahead. Was it Chris Thomas? Looked like Thomas. Out to the 39-yard line, gain of four. And Chris uh, does not look 100% as he comes out of the game. Broncos go in with the uh, three-wide set now. Ryan Teal and Bart Hull leave as well. Sheldon Forehand, Terry Hefner, and Chris Sweeting at the top of the screen. And Winky White at tailback. Yes, you're right. 
Now Wiki into the slot, just giving him all kinds of things to think about on second and six. Verdon, big rush, and he's almost intercepted. Ball dropped. Absolutely. In and out of the hands of Matthew Clapton. First team all big sky linebacker. Has no, inter has no interceptions in the playoffs. Did get one in the regular season. Clapton did, but he dropped that one, plain and simple. The uh, Wolfpack coming again here. You see a six-man rush on Verdon, so that should have opened things up. But the man who stayed back was Clapton. The pass intended for Winky. Broncos got a little bit fancy on that play. 13-28 left, first half. Third and six Broncos at their 39-yard line. Verdon looking for the middle screen and throws it away. It's intercepted and going to be a touchdown. 73, Joe Caspers scores for Nevada. Just a horrible choice by Mike Vert, who has made very few mistakes the last few weeks, but he made one there. Joe Caspers has really come on in the playoffs for Nevada, but boy, nothing to that extent. This is reminiscent of the throw at Montana that turned the game around, and we'll see if the Broncos can recover from this. Mike just trying to throw the ball away to Ryan Teal right into the arms of Caspers, who does not probably have very good hands, and the Broncos are in a hole. Caspers, a 6'7", 270-pound sophomore from Pittsburgh, California. He rumbles into the end zone, and the Wolfpack now leading 12-0, going for two. No. They wanted to try and get the coaching staff to go for two, but they're going to kick it. McKelvey out of the hold of Williamson. Kick is good. 13-18 to play. First half. Nevada up 13 on the Broncos after a second turnover by Boise State. Larry Vanilli and Tom Scott with you again after disaster has struck the Boise State offense in the form of a 25-yard approximately interception return by Joe Casper. This is Chris Thomas hit at the 15, fights his way to the 19-yard line. They're going to spot it officially at the 18. So the Broncos with their worst field position start offensively this afternoon. Trying to get untracked on offense, the there's Broncos. A, there may be a, there's a flag on the field. Oh, I, saw, I saw an offside call against Nevada. Now they're talking to the Broncos. All you ask of your special teams is to keep the opposing team on a return to kickoff inside the 20-yard line. I think we're going to re-kick this one. Offside on the kicking team. Five-yard penalty. Repeat the kick. So the Broncos choosing to take the yardage. Okay, you see, uh, looks like the top or the bottom of your top of your screen or bottom of your screen. Oh, it's very close. There may have been one more guy at the bottom of your screen that we didn't see. Boise State would like to improve on that 18-yard line. And now we'll have a second chance. Right, Mike Verdon had been playing so well. He was 5-for-5 uh, five five for 64 yards until that interception. This is Mike Verdon's first and only game in Mackey Stadium. He was here last year but did not play a down. Dwayne Halliday went all the way on that 30-14 to 14 Boise State loss. 25-yard pass interception by Joe Caspers has Nevada up 13 to nothing with 13-12 left in the half. And a crowd approaching 20,000, whooping it up here pretty good for their Nevada Wolfpack. They've got uh, UNLV in tonight for a big basketball game in the Lawler Center, so between this and that, they'll have 30,000 fans between those two events. And they have a swim meet going on on campus as well. So it's a busy day for athletics here on the uh, Nevada campus in Reno. McKelvey again. This time it'll be Kenny Keel from the seven-yard line. Back to the middle of the field. Keel trying to get outside across the 30, 20, 30, 40. Midfield as Kenny Keel is bounced out of bounds. And that's the kind of offensive spark the Broncos need. Keel breaking across the middle and taking it to the 50-yard line. And so that offside penalty, a big one, as Nevada loses 32 yards in field position. Here's Kenny. The wall was set up right, and Kenny sees it. A great job once again by the BSU special teams. Hard to pick up all the uh, key blocks from ground level, but Kenny gets out to midfield. Broncos needed that medicine. Boy, he just burst through there all of a sudden. Chris Sweeting back into the Bronco offensive group now. 
Sweeting goes wide to the top of the screen. And Winky a tailback once again. Hefner and forehand. And now Winky will shift into the slot. So four wide receivers with Tinkstad, who bumps into Verton. And then Tinkstad powers his way to the Nevada 40-yard line. Tinks has have a, had a little trouble with his footing. He, fu he uh, fumbled once because of the footing, and he almost loses it here, but breaks into the secondary. Boy, you see a great block there by Winky White, one-on-one -on -one to free him up and get the extra five yards. Winky moved into the right slot that time. It's interesting to see that the Broncos do not come out of their game plan despite this 13 to nothing deficit, and I think that's a good sign. Broncos about a yard short in the measurements, so they'll have second down and very short at the Wolfpack 41-yard line. Ball control has been the name of the game for Nevada here so far in the first half until that uh, interception return for a touchdown by Joe Caspers. In the first quarter, nine minutes and 45 seconds. Ball was in the Wolfpack's hands. This crowd is as fired up as any Nevada crowd I have ever seen here. Broncos now with the power set. Ryan Teal in there, along with Thomas and Tinkstead. And it's Thomas for the first down and more to about the 37-yard line. That designed simply to get the first down. He got three more out of it. Chris Thomas. Broncos have to pull out all the stops, and even though Chris Thomas isn't 100%, He's going today, and the Broncos shuttling players in and out on every play. We have not seen Sean Sanders the past two possessions. Now Bart Hull at tailback. First down, Boise State at the 37. Hull and Tinkstad in there. White and forehand, the receivers to the near side with double tight ends. Bird with a play action fake. Gets some pressure, rolls away from it. Breaks a tackle at the 32 and out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Great job by Mike Burden as Nevada came with a five-man rush on first down. Nevada really wanting to get after Mike Burden today. Five-man rush, you see, as Frank Sullivan came in from his linebacker position. on a, I guess it was a semi-blitz, but he did line up on the line, and then Mike gets out of trouble and gets six yards out of it. Second down now and about three from the 31-yard line of Nevada. 11.45 left first half. Broncos trying to get on the scoreboard. Thomas caught from behind at the 30 after a gain of yard. Nothing there that time as Sullivan crashing in from the outside and the guy who actually made the stop was Tony Amantia. So this is a big play for the Broncos trailing 13 to nothing. Third and three, Thomas limps off to the near side. Broncos have yet to convert on third down with the power set again. Sheldon forehand wide to the top of the screen and double tight ends. Verdon on the quarterback keeper trying to get outside and he may make it now. No, he's going to be about a yard short. It'll be fourth down at the 28-yard line. Now the Broncos uh, talking about what to do with Mike Black, and they are about a yard and a half short. They are within Mike's field goal range. Wind would be a little bit at Mike's back as you watch Mike elude D.O. Ship and Frank Sullivan, but not Matthew Clafton. And the Broncos will go for it again on oh, fourth my. down. Fourth and a yard, trailing 13-0, and the Nevada crowd rising as one to cheer their defense. Boise State with a power backfield. Flags down, Verdon to throw. Ball is intercepted and, and dropped by Bernard Ellison. Did a Bronco move? Verdon trying to go for Larry Stainer. A Bronco did move. It'll be a legal procedure against Boise State. And the Wolfpack will take over, holding on this fourth down play. Legal procedure on the offense. Henley refuse. Fourth down. So Nevada gets the football back, leading 13-0 with 10-11 left. First half here in Reno. Broncos have uh, kept the penalties down during the playoffs. Nevada a little bit more penalized. 
that one uh, maybe not so costly as uh, it would not have made any difference, but the Broncos not executing well in third downs. 0 for 4 on third down today. Nevada back on offense from their 28-yard line. And now you're going to see some of Ray Whalen caught from behind and pulled down at the line of scrimmage for no gain, basically. Nevada wants to keep that running game going as Lewis Ray is into the game now for Boise State. A very quick first half so far. A little sprint draw action as Whalen follows his up man. Like Scott Russell caught him from behind, made the tackle. No gain. Second and ten. Ortega and Taylor wide to the near side. Gatlin straight back to throw. Over the middle, intercepted by Tim O'Connor. Brings it back inside the 30-yard line. Broncos right back in business. Boy, the Wolfpack trying to pick on Tim O'Connor. He was isolated on tight end Scott Benning. Benning running an out route. Gatlin not pressured, just a bad throw. He did not see the lurking Tim O'Connor. And now the Broncos get it back inside the Nevada 30. So the third turnover of the afternoon, the first by the Broncos against the Wolfpack offense. Boise State trying to capitalize on offense now. Mike Verdon wants to burn a timeout. Didn't like what he saw. We'll take one as well. 9.25 left first half. We'll be right back. Larry Vanilli and Tom Scott with you again from Mackey Stadium on the University of Nevada campus in Reno. Boise State Broncos back on offense after Tim O'Connor's big interception. Gives them a chance to reestablish some momentum in this game. Verdon to throw under pressure for Terry Hefner wide open at the 10 five out of bounds oh, at the my. one yard line Hefner went airborne and was driven out of bounds but the Broncos are knocking at the door now boy that was a great play action probably the best play action of the season by Mike Burden everybody thinks Smart has the ball here the downside of this play is that Jack Porter has come up limping and is being helped off the field. The Broncos starting center who was injured earlier. Timeout taken on the field and with 917 left we'll be right back with the Broncos knocking on the door at the one yard line. Mike Verdon's 28 yard completion to Terry Hefner gives the Broncos first and goal at the one yard line the power backfield now. Thomas in there, and he will go up and in. Touchdown, Broncos. You can, the 2,000 Bronco fans are making their presence known right now as Chris, as he has done so many times in his three-year career, goes up and over. The lead block by Tingstad, and he's still Gets up over the top, and the Broncos have narrowed it to within seven and a chance to take it down to six. Many of those Bronco fans up at the 10-yard line be above the end zone that Thomas scored in. So they had a good look at that one. Bronco band in there as well. Mike Black's kick is good. 9-14 left first half. The Boise State Broncos on the scoreboard now back in this football game trailing 13-7 and what a huge offensive possession that was. Yes, after the Nevada uh, had stopped Boise State on fourth down, things looked pretty bleak for BSU trailing 13 to nothing. With the ball control, Nevada had been able to uh, execute this afternoon, but then Tim O'Connor makes the interception, gives the Broncos the ball on the 29. Mike Verdon with great play action hits Terry Hefner down to the one Chris Thomas goes over the top and it's a ball game once again Broncos now with a chance on defense to uh, do something you're looking at that Bronco crowd about half of them are in that group and then the other half about the uh, 35 yard line 
at the other end of the field on the other side of the stadium. Those folks got the good seats because they're in the sun. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. I mean, even though it's a delightful day here and the temperature just about 50 degrees, it is cold in the shade. And we were down on the field yesterday at about 3.30, about the time this game will end. And it is nippy once the, the sun goes goes down and uh, yeah, the temperature really drops here in Reno after the sun goes down. One thing we'll see, too, as we move into the second half will be the shadow creeping out onto the field more and more as you see that two play 29 yard drive. Mike Black now to kick it off for the Broncos and Trimel Taylor the deep man. Black bounces one and from the 21 yard line. And Marcel King going to make the tackle finally on Chris Singleton. Well that strategy backfires. That's what they did in Boise although in Boise uh, they executed a pooch kick to keep it away from Taylor. This time a squib, and it really backfires on the Broncos. Here's a look at Tim O'Connor's interception that set up the touchdown. Gatlin, with plenty of time, just throws it into the arms of the lurking Tim O'Connor, and that is responsible for getting the Broncos back in this ballgame. Two plays, they were in the end zone. Now they're back on defense at midfield. Ray Whalen met after a one-yard gain, and he is wrestled down. Scott Russell in there. Very important that the Broncos keep that kind of uh, pressure on Ray Whalen, force the Wolf back to the air on second and long situations. Gatlin has now thrown an interception, so so that will be on his mind a little bit. He threw two up in Boise, and Chris Vargas threw one. But we're talking about uh, the strategy of keeping the ball away from Tramel Taylor. That time it backfired as the squib is returned to midfield. Second and nine, ball nudging into Bronco territory at the 49-yard line to throw, gets a rush, throws it away. There's and the Broncos there's want nobody. grounding, but they're not going to get it. Eric Helgeson talking with one of the officials. Gatlin really unloaded straight up field. No receivers in the area, but he's not going to get called for the grounding penalty. That's the first time the Broncos have gotten to Gatlin this afternoon. We'll see it again. The officials probably ruled that Gatlin's arm was in motion when he was hit. But that was just a throwaway. He got away with that one. It'll be third and nine now for the Nev Nevada Wolfpack at the Bronco 49-yard line. Very important play here. Broncos have to make the stand to stay in the ball game. Gatlin gets protection again, has his man, Ross Ortega. Ball is loose, the Broncos have it. Elijah George strips Ross Ortega and the Broncos have it at their own 40. Boy, has Elijah George made a couple of big plays in the last couple of weeks. And the Bronco fans leap to their feet. Louis Ray recovers the fumble. Ortega running underneath the zone on third and nine. Great call by the Wolfpack, getting what they need. But look at the <laughs> stripping, the pounding by Elijah George. Louis Ray falls on the ball, and the Broncos have it back with 8.14 left in the half. Now the Broncos with a chance to assert themselves offensively and quiet this crowd. Verdon slips a little coming out, going deep. Chris Sweeting was open, no penalty. Little contact between the two as Sweeting looked back. Good look at Elijah George out of Bora High School in Walla Walla Junior College. Made the big reception last week on the fake punt that wound up being a, such a critical play in the victory over Middle Tennessee State. Now he punches the ball loose. Louis Ray recovers, and the Broncos with a chance in the final eight minutes of this half to maybe get something going again on offense. And that last pass underthrown because Chris Sweeting beats Bernard Ellison on that play. Second and ten, Verdon to throw. Middle, Middle screen. screen to Hefner. No, penalty flag thrown into the Bronco offensive line as well, so we can anticipate a holding call there. Nevada will have to decide whether they want the yardage. But really surprising that Verdon didn't throw that ball to Terry Hefner. Nevada, he was wide open. Nevada has a chance to get the Broncos third and ten or push them back and give them another down. Interesting decision here for the Wolfpack. Eight minutes and two seconds to play in this first half. Nevada leading 13-7. Nevada wants the, I believe Nevada wants the field position, yes. Holding, 
On the offense, 10 yard penalty, still second down. So they take they take the 10 yards and it'll be second and 20 for the Broncos from their 30. Flag was thrown into the middle of the Bronco offensive line there, couldn't catch the uh, hole. Second and 20 from the Bronco 30. They must reach, they must cross midfield by half a yard or so. We'll play fake. Burden to throw. Oh, and he underthrows a wide open Sheldon forehand. And Mike is not happy with himself. He looks up in the air and kind of throws his hands down. Sheldon forehand had split the Nevada zone, and he would have uh, made it third and about five had he made the catch. Broncos now with four wide receivers into the huddle. Sweeting, Hefner, forehand, and Winky White. There you see how wide open Sheldon was, and now a big third and 20. Winky lines up at the tailback spot again as Bart Hull comes out. Now Tinkstad will be the lone setback as Winky goes into the slot. Burden on third and 20. Underthrown, trying to get to forehand over the middle, and Nevada's defense stops the Broncos, and Mike Black will have to kick it away with 7.51 left in this first half. Good initial protection here for Burden. Credit this one to the secondary, and finally Neil Holbert, Mark Drehaus get in there. Neil Holbert making the hit on Mike Burden. Mike Black standing at his 15-yard line. High kick, and Ellison from the 35, trying to find a seam. Gets it out to about the 42-yard line, and excellent field position now for Nevada with 7.40 left here in the first quarter. We'll take a break. We'll be right back for the rest of this second quarter action. Wolfpack by six. 7.40 left in the second quarter. Broncos trailing Nevada. 13-7. Wolfpack back on offense from their 42-yard line. Ray Whalen hit at the line of scrimmage. Down after a yard or two game. Nevada continues to try to run on first down. The Broncos getting a handle on that running game. Eric Helgeson and Louis Ray making the stop there. Here you see it from the end zone. It's just fighting off blocks is all it is. So another second and long situation for the University of Nevada as Skip Hall talks to his offense. Tim Langens has replaced Kenny Keel on defense for the Broncos. Second and nine for the Wolfpack. In motion is Tremel Taylor. Gatlin hands to Ray Whalen. Hit at the 45 after gaining a yard. A little unrest in the crowd. Yeah. They Great don't job. Like the call particularly apparently. Great job by Lewis Ray once again. I think uh, Lewis is in in place of uh, Anthony Hernandez right now. Let's see uh, Russell, number 44, isolated. Linebacker play, he finishes it off along with Tim Langens and a big third down. Third and seven, six minutes and 30 seconds to play in this first half. Wolfpack at their 45 yard line. Gatlin to throw. Ill breaks a tackle and is going to be just short of the first down when he steps out of bounds. And now a decision for Chris Ald and the Nevada coaching staff. Gatlin stepped out of bounds at the Bronco 49-yard line, one yard short, and it looks like the Wolfpack will kick it away. Punt team comes on. This time, Darrell Goodlow on the outside working on Tony Wells from right end. Forces Gatlin out of the pocket. Gatlin, I guess with uh, Elijah George coming up from the secondary, did not see the marker. Broncos must be cautious now of the fake. Ortega does kick it, though. He averages 34 in the playoffs. Robinson doesn't fair catch and is spun down at the 12-yard line. Well, that's very dangerous stuff. Absolutely. Very risky stuff by Frankie, who doesn't like the fair catch. Yeah, he had a and he had a big day against Nevada in November. Six returns for 51 yards. So he had the confidence to make the catch, but there was right in his face, and he tries to spin out of there. Reggie Robinson back up corner. So the Broncos will go back on offense now. Six minutes, 10 seconds left in this half. Trailing Nevada 13-7. Winner to the national championship game next week in Statesboro, Georgia. Burden hands to Bart Hall. 
pounds it out to the 15, maybe the 16-yard line. Broncos will have the same problem Nevada has been having the past few possessions, and that is second and long. About this game and that one 10 years ago. Second and seven. And nowhere to go for Sean Sanders, hit in his own backfield and down at the 12 yard line, the original line of scrimmage. This is the first time we've seen Sean in the game since uh, the second possession of the day for Boise State. And there was no chance as we see Chris Thomas being worked on. He has a variety of ailments and one appears to be his right foot. Somebody didn't block somebody. <laughs> And somebody's going to probably have some words to say about it Broncos, on the sideline. Broncos 0 of 5. Third and 10. And on the third crowd whooping it up here. Trying to rattle the Bronco offense. Backed up to their own goal line. Burden to throw. And makes another bad throw. And is very lucky to escape with an incompletion. The battle will have 447 to work with on the clock. And good field position after this punt. There's a hold call against Boise State that will be declined and Burden since his long pass to Terry Hefner has missed five in a row and he's missed uh, eight of his last nine. Very streaky day for Mike who connected on his first five passes then missed three then the big one to Hefner that set up the touchdown and now he's gone cold again and as a result Mike Black will be standing in his own end zone to kick this one away with Wolfpack fans directly behind him trying to make life as difficult as they can in this situation. Darren Lyle calling the signals. See him reaching over and pounding on the wall there. Black with a short kick away from Taylor and it bounces out of bounds at the Bronco 42 yard line. Four minutes and 40 seconds left. A big stand needed from the Bronco defense. Warming up on the sidelines by the way, senior quarterback Dwayne Halliday. So maybe Mike Verdon shaken up a bit. Maybe Skip Hall wants to try something different. Dwayne Halliday has not played in six weeks since the Idaho State game in Pocatello. Good look at the 6-2 senior out of Coeur d'Alene. If his folks Bruce and Kay are watching from up there today, he has been marvelous through what has been a very difficult year sitting and watching. He's been a cheerleader. He's been at the sidelines supporting his teammates and in particular supporting the guy who beat him out for the starting job. And maybe he's going to get a chance here. Who knows? Wolfpack once again running Ray Whalen on first down to the chagrin of some of the fans. Although Whalen got more yardage this time than he has in quite a while. Four yards on that first down carry. Second and six now. Clock moving with 410 to play in this first half. Gadlin checking off once again. Going to hand it to Whalen, who breaks a tackle and tries to pop it outside. Gets the first down at the Bronco 30-yard line. A flag down at the end of the play, and that could be more bad news for Boise State. Although the Wolfpack is walking backward. And the officials are speaking with the Boise State group. Face mask against the Broncos. As you said, more bad news for Boise <laughs> State. They were talking with the Broncos, just telling them what they did. Face mask, five-yard penalty on the defense. So first it's down. judged an inadvertent penalty. Five yards rather than the 15 that would be more severe. Broncos trailing 13-7, to seven, want to keep Nevada off the board here. Nevada now in field goal range. Broncos within a touchdown, despite having been outplayed throughout this first half. 3.40 and the clock moving. Nevada with all three of its timeouts still available. Gatlin checks off again, rolls away from. Pass completed to, uh, is it Benning? Scott Benning. Steps out of bounds. As kind he of a, crosses the 20. Kind of a naked boot that time by Gatlin as he rolled to his right. Anthony Hernandez applying pressure on him. And he had to sidearm it a la Bernie, or that was Helgeson there. Had to sidearm it a la Bernie Kosar to Benning. And there you see the field conditions 
which are about as good as can be expected at this time of the year in Reno, but still a little bit slippery. It was awfully cold overnight down in the teens and now has warmed up above freezing, so it softens up a little bit and things will get a little slick. But there's been no moisture all week. Gatlin now with Helgeson looping behind him. He overthrows his intended receiver in the end zone and well, Anthony Brown. See him take a real <laughs> spill there. I kind of held my breath until he climbed back up. Right in the area of our sideline camera. T Taylor that time one-on-one -on -one with Anthony Brown, well covered by Anthony. Gatlin looking for Taylor all the way this time with good protection until Helgeson comes in at the last minute. But great coverage, and I think that's all Gatlin could do. The only way Taylor would have made that catch would be to go about uh, 10 feet into the air over Anthony Brown. Penalty on uh, Nevada. Moves the there ball was a back hold. 10 yards. The Broncos accept the yardage. You move them back 10 to the 29-yard line. If it comes to that, it'll make it a lot longer kick for Kevin McKelvey. Second and 14 now for Nevada. 2.48 left in this first half. Broncos trail 13-7. If you just joined us, two field goals for the way back in the first quarter. The teams have matched touchdowns here in the second. Gatlin rolling. Russell throws a hand up, intercepted Darren Lyle. He might get open field. No, he's not going to get outside, but the Broncos escape and have the football back, and a penalty flag goes down. Tony Hernandez charged with throwing an elbow at Fred Gatlin as they mixed it up at midfield. Scott Russell, Anthony Hernandez, Fred Gatlin, and I believe Ross Ortega all in on that scuffle away from the ball. The flag should be after the play, so the Broncos should retain possession, but they will be in terrible field position. Floyd Dawson was very specific about exactly who did what and pointed right at Hernandez and showed him the elbow. Gatlin with time on the rollout, rollout but he was hurried by Scott Russell. Tried to throw it up in that uh, twilight zone where Tremail Taylor usually makes the catch. And Darren Lyle playing center field gets the ball back for the Broncos. The Broncos will retain possession and Mike Verdon will retain his position at quarterback. Personal foul on the defense. Half the distance, first down. Darren Lyle with the interception. That's his sixth. You know, he only played seven games during the regular season. Had five interceptions. Would have been the nation among the nation's leaders, but didn't qualify for regular season statistical leadership because you have to play in three quarters of your team's games. He missed by one. These are the penalties for the afternoon. Even now, the yardage basically even. The Broncos now trailing by six points with 237 and deep in their own territory no doubt initially would be glad just to get a first down and burn some of this clock and escape this uh, near disaster that has one one problem for the broncos the penalty is half the distance but it is first down and 21. they must get to the 34 yard line for a first down this is bart hull out across the 10 to the 12 13 yard line so a gain of just a yard Broncos shuffling tailbacks in and out. Chris Thomas now comes back on for the Broncos. Sean Sanders started the game. They're trying to get some effectiveness out of that position where they are ailing and uh, Bart trying to hang on with those bad ankles. Second and 20 now. The ball just nosing across the 13-yard line. Clock moving with 2.05 to play in this half. Verdon looking to throw is caught, spun down. Ball is loose. Nevada has it. Touchdown, Wolfpack. And Mike Verdon looking on in disbelief at the celebration. The entire Broncos sideline looking on in disbelief. As BSU has been dodging a bullet with the defense getting some turnovers, and now... Nevada about to go up 20 to 7 with just 155 left in the half. Just when it looked like the Broncos had escaped disaster, it strikes again. We wondered about an emotional overcharge. It's the emotion has really carried Nevada this afternoon, especially defensively. 
McKelvey's kick is good, and with 1.55 left in the first half, the Nevada Wolfpack have taken a 20-7 lead on the Boise State Broncos. Gut check time for the Broncos now. All but 2,000 of these fans are on their feet and making noise. As many times as Boise State's come down here with its legions of fans, never seen uh, the Wolfpack fans answer back like they are today. Everybody is into this revenge thing in Reno, Nevada. And right now, Nevada is getting it up by 13 points. The Broncos had warmed up Dwayne Halliday on the sidelines. They went with Mike Burton. Burton in danger of a safety, trying to get the ball off. The ball was loose in his hands, fell to the turf. And the Wolfpack recovers for their second defensive touchdown of the afternoon. 20 to 7 with a minute 55 to play in this first half. Kenny Keel and Chris Thomas will be back as the return men for this kickoff. And the crowd really roaring now. They're into it big time after the defensive score. Mistakes, mistakes, mistakes. Mentioned in the pre, it's easy to say you can't turn the ball over, but the way the Broncos have turned the ball over has been absolutely devastating. McKelvey rips it and sends Thomas back into the end zone where he will down the football, and the Broncos will start from their 20 yard line. And Dwayne Halliday comes out to quarterback the Boise State Broncos for this final 155. And the Broncos figure they have nothing to lose. By putting Dwayne into the game, Mike is not playing well right now. He had a great, about the first half of the first quarter, he was playing great football, and he's had some trouble, and we'll see if Dwayne has any more luck. Mike would come back into the game if, if Dwayne can't do it. 6 of 14 for 92 yards, and a devastating interception for Burton. Halliday, straight back. Finds Larry Stainer for a completed pass on his first attempt, and that's always good for a quarterback's confidence. The Broncos also brought a third quarterback on the trip, Jeff Maladnich, the sophomore out of Gig Harbor, Washington, perhaps the heir apparent, although he'll have to battle in spring football drills with Travis Stewart and maybe Victor Martirano for that starting job next year. Broncos with a minute and a half left, first half. Halliday banged into, breaks free, and what an effort by Dwayne Halliday. And out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Dwayne Halliday refusing to go down when he was crashed into in his own backfield. Tom Scott's making his way to the sideline. We hope to have a quick interview with Wolfpack coach Chris Ault as the teams head for the dressing room. And then when they are returning to the field, Tom will visit with Skip Hall. Broncos now with second and eight. Make it third and eight. The ball at the 23-yard line. 118 to play. Halliday to throw. Has Winky wide open out of bounds. 40, 41-yard line. Great throw. And a great catch. Heated words exchanged on the Boise State sideline by the Bronco players and a couple of Nevada players over covering. Winky White and Kevin Sims high-fiving each other to let, just to kind of let each other know that it's all part of the game and no hard feelings. Broncos with a fresh first down now and 112. Dwayne Halliday trying to rally them in a relief role for Mike Verdon. Halliday with good protection deep to Winky and the ball batted away by Kevin Sims who wins this battle with White. It'll be second and 10 with 106 left. Broncos would dearly love at least to get into Mike Black's field goal range. This ball just a little high, but good position that time by Kevin Sims to get there and bat it away from Winky White. Chris Sweeting now and Terry Hefner are the wide men on second and 10 from the 41. Verdon to throw. Excuse me, uh, Halliday overthrows Larry Stainer, who really took a shot to the ribs and a penalty flag thrown, and the Broncos are going to get a first down out of it. 
Halliday's pass a little high for Stainer. And the flag thrown. You watch Stainer in the lower left corner of your screen there. And I'm not sure you couldn't make a case that the ball was by him before the contact was made, but the Broncos will take it. They'll get a 15-yard penalty. Defensive pass interference, 15-yard penalty, first down. First down, Broncos, and the ball at the Nevada 46-yard line. 59 seconds left. Mike Black warming up his kicking leg on the near sideline. The Broncos probably about 20 yards from reasonable field goal range. Couple pass completions, but a full minute and two timeouts with which to do it. And we're ready to go now. Dwayne Halliday again. Hefner wide at the top of the screen. Winky White the short field, short side of the field. The white man left. Halliday rolling from pressure. Going deep for Hefner. Ball intercepted and dropped. Incomplete. The Broncos will get a reprieve. That ball up for grabs. Hefner went after it. He has questions for the officials about the contact, but comes away with no call. Give you another look now as Halliday rolls away from pressure and just airs it out. Slightly beyond Hefner and the Broncos, frankly, lucky still to have it. Second and ten now. Ball spotted at the 44-yard line of Nevada. Winky White and Sheldon Forehand now. And a little screen pass for Chris Thomas to the 40, 35, and out of bounds at the 30-yard line. 14 big yards and a first down, stopping the clock with 41 seconds left. Great execution and great thinking by Thomas to break it outside rather than inside and save a timeout. See Halliday draw the defense to him and then he delivers. And Thomas, with great presence of mind, breaks it outside and out of bounds to stop the clock. 41 seconds. Ball at the 30-yard line. They are in Mike Black's field goal range now. To the end zone, the Winky White, touchdown Broncos! Dwayne Halliday celebrates at midfield, and look at the Broncos burst out onto the field with emotion. coming to life after the 30-yard touchdown pass from Dwayne Halliday to Winky White. And boy, you haven't seen that much emotion on the Broncos' sideline in quite a while. They're right back in it despite a near disastrous first half. Mike Black now out of Terry Hefner's hold. Kick is good. Broncos back within six with 33 seconds to play in this first half, 20 to 14. Oh, what a wild swing of emotion. Dwayne Halliday on in relief of Mike Verdon, who struggled through his time in the first half, hot and cold. Completed five in a row, missed a few, hit a big pass to set up the Broncos' first touchdown by Chris Thomas, and then threw a disastrous interception, fumble, recovered in the end zone for a touchdown, so he's out. Dwayne Halliday's in, and Winky White is in the end zone. 33 seconds left. I mentioned already Tom Scott is at the sidelines. And hoping to grab Chris Alt for a quick reaction to this first 30 minutes of football and get some insight perhaps on what he thinks his team has to do the rest of the way to get a spot in that championship game next week in Statesboro, Georgia. When halftime is near its end, we'll visit with Skip Hall as he makes his way out of the locker room and talk about what strategy the Broncos will employ in the second half. 
Well, this has been everything we've expected of it, this football game. Two evenly matched teams, and from a Broncos standpoint, a couple of unfortunate turnovers have them playing from behind, but very much in the game. This again is Chris Singleton, who breaks it outside one more time. Finally, bull down at the 43-yard line. 23 seconds left. Broncos have to be careful now. They don't give up too much yardage and let the Wolfpack get right into field goal range. Three timeouts available for Nevada. 23 seconds. From the 44-yard line, Nevada leading 20-14. Was trying to put some pressure on in the flat. It's Ray Whalen who is still on his feet now down at the 48 yard line of Boise State. Clock running with 13 seconds. Clock stopped now with 11. Timeout called by the Wolfpack. Broncos go 80 yards to score. Ray Whalen shaken up now. He's had uh, all kinds of injuries the last couple of months and missed a few weeks of action and still down. That Bronco drive following the fumbled touchdown recovery by Nevada. 11 seconds left. First half as they work with Ray Whalen, who's carried 15 times for 53 yards. Long gainer is nine. The Broncos trying to keep him from exploding. He's up and uh, going to be able to walk off. And Whalen, it looked like, fell on the football and maybe had the wind knocked out of him. Anyway, he's walking off now, and that's a good sign. You don't like to see anybody suffer serious injury. 11 seconds left. Nevada with two timeouts remaining. Three wide receivers to the near side. Ortega with Taylor inside him and King in the slot. Gatlin straight back to throw. In the near flat, bounces it, and incomplete, intending it for Ross Ortega. That play used seven seconds. So barring a penalty, we are headed for the last play of the first half. And give you another look at this. And no question that it kind of hops in there. Four seconds left. Barring a penalty against the defense, this will do it for the first half. The Broncos will be very relieved to leave the field trailing only 20 to 14 after what they've been through. One play. And the handoff inside. And Keith Washington runs it to the 25-yard line, and that will do it. Wrapping up the first half of play with the Broncos on the short end of a 20-14 score. They trail 20 to 14 and will be kicking off to the Nevada Wolfpack as we open play here in the third quarter. 30 minutes away from the national championship game, one of these two teams will play Georgia Southern next Saturday afternoon in Statesboro, Georgia. Georgia Southern clobbering Central Florida today 44 to 7 after leading 9 7 at halftime. So they really blew it open and dominated in their seventh straight playoff game on their home field. Here the Wolfpack have the home field and Mike Black kicking it off. That's Ross Ortega who stepped out of bounds at the 22 yard line. Penalty flags thrown. Flags flew late. Black with the pop-up kick, and as Ortega caught it, he backed into the sideline and was called out of bounds. Look at Mike Black now. Watch him. <laughs> he likes it. By design, kicking away from Tremel Taylor and Bernard Ellison. 
That's about as emotional as a kicker can get until he's won the game with a field goal at the conclusion. Here's a call on the penalty. A fair catch was given. Catching team been run with the football. It's a five-yard penalty. Delay the game on the offense. First down. Well, I didn't hear all of that. Our microphone uh, hookup isn't working real well up here in the booth, but... Oh, fair catch. Okay. It's been explained to me what all of you knew already. The fair catch and then tried to return it. So the Wolfpack penalized back to their 16-yard line. First down, Nevada. Ready to go here in the third quarter. Ray Whalen with the hole. Brought down by Elijah George as he crosses the 25-yard line. Gain of about 12 to the 28-yard line. Whalen had 53 yards on 15 carries in the first half. 17 carries it is for 53 yards. His longest gain of the first half, eight yards. His first carry of the second goes for a dozen. First down, Wolfpack at the 28. Broncos showing a seven-man front. Whalen with the handoff. Not much there. He stopped at the 31. Catch your breath yet? I think so. <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's quite a, a little sprint up there. That's a busy halftime. Chris Alt, I think, uh, when, when we talked to him there at halftime, gave a clue as to what might happen here in the second half. If Gatlin is ineffective at all, he uh, he may go to Chris Vargas. Scott Russell hurting Boy, the Broncos badly. can ill afford to lose that guy. Matt McLaughlin and Tim O'Connor moves over to the middle linebacker spot. Second down and seven for the Wolfpack at their 31. Helgeson got a good break that time, but couldn't get pressure on. Open field tackle there by Frank Robinson, but Ortega picks up the first down yardage. And paid for it a little bit. One of the things that uh, Gatlin's been doing all day is checking off. He did that uh, up in Boise, too, is checking off all day long. Sometimes it worked, many times it didn't. And first, that, that may be a factor in what Chris Holt does here in the second half. It'll be interesting to see what Skip Hall does as well. Does he come back with Dwayne Halliday? Or? He, he said he would. He said he's coming back with Dwayne. Played a minute and a half here in the third quarter. Helgeson with pressure. Gatlin has Ooh. his pass dropped by Ortega inside the 45-yard line. Eric Helgeson got his first chance to look at Fred Gatlin with nobody in blue standing in front of him. Hit the turf uh, really hard as he was, he, he slipped as he was trying to make this catch and went face first. Look at the helmet, the Ooh. face mask hit the turf, and that's what jarred the ball loose. Second down and 10, Wolfpack now at the Nevada 38-yard line, first series of this third quarter. Nevada leading 20-14. to 14. This is Ray Whalen, hit at the line of scrimmage, yard gain. Boy, important play on second and 10. Todd Gilkey wrapping him up at the knees. On second and 10, the, the pack comes with a run. 20 carries for 70 yards now for Whalen as the Broncos seem to be getting a handle on him. And down immediately. It's a, it was kind of like a calf roping. Third and nine, and a big call early now. Going to affect field position, perhaps for a great deal of the third quarter, depending on what happens with this play. Broncos get some pressure. Passes dropped by Tremel Taylor. Coverage by Scott Russell, who's back in there. And a big rush led by Sean Anderson. And the Bronco defense comes off feeling very good about their effort. Bronco defense starting to get to Gatlin. The Bronco defense starting to snuff the Nevada running game. And that could turn things around. Now Winky will return the punt instead of Frank Robinson. Ross Ortega to kick it. Drops the ball, and the Broncos with a big rush. Now he wants to throw it. Penalty flag, that'll be probably an illegal lineman downfield, and the Broncos will get a big turnover. 
Wow. They'll, they'll have the ball in Nevada territory. And boy, I tell you what, the rush was on, and the reason Frank Robinson wasn't returning the kick is that he was the rush man on outside right, and he was in Ortega's face immediately. I'm sure Ortega thought about that. There you see Frank coming up at the top of your screen, just missing Ortega, and Ortega trying to get it down there to Leon Washington, but perhaps Washington was an interior lineman, so. An old Joe receiver on the offense, refused, first down this way. So the Broncos capitalize and have the football in Nevada territory at the 40-yard line. Great opportunity here for the Bronco offense. You get a look at a little emotion coming out of Scott Russell. Halliday in at quarterback after that beautiful drive he engineered at the end of the half to pull the Broncos to within six. He was four of six for 69 yards on that drive with the big touchdown to Winky. Halliday has to keep it because Thomas slipped down, or Sean Sanders slipped down and missed the handoff. You can't blame that on Dwayne. He had no choice, looked up, and his running back is on his knees. Recognizing the problem immediately was Mark Drehaas, defensive end coming from the outside. Here you see number 60, Mark Drehaas. Cannot get the ball off. Dwayne wisely tucks it away. And Drehaas makes the stop, so the Broncos with a second and long. Play is delayed momentarily. The Bronco players are being pushed back off the sideline by the officials who want a little more room between the edge of the playing field and the players who might come in contact with guys coming off the field quickly. 12-20 left, third quarter. 20 to 14 Nevada. The Broncos, after a failed punt opportunity for Nevada, have the ball in Wolfpack territory. Second down and 14 at the 44. Thomas in a tailback now. And Sheldon forehand in motion. Halliday going up top to Winky White. And he's going said Boise State must pass, can't pass, can't win. The Broncos now have their second touchdown of the day through the air. Winky left Ellison in the dust. Ellison desperately tries to get a pass interference call just to stop the play. He knew he was dead. And Winky in the end zone with his second touchdown in two drives. In their first possession set up by the failed punt, Mike Black now to kick it out of Terry Hefner's hole. Kick is perfect. Broncos take the lead, 21-20 with 12.03 left third quarter. Dwayne Halliday really enjoying the moment. And I said earlier, what a classy kid and a, just the marvelous way he's handled being benched, losing the starting job, sitting and watching and never hanging his head, but cheering his teammates. And now when a time comes and he's called on to be the man, he is the man and has thrown two touchdown passes and rallied the Broncos into the lead here in the third quarter. And a week ago, Tom, it was the third quarter that nearly proved disastrous for Nevada. Exactly. The sky kick by Mike Black. And good coverage. It's Matt McLaughlin on the tackle at the 30-yard line. Now the momentum has shifted all the way over to the Boise State side of the field, and we'll see what the defense can do with it. Bronco fans, a couple thousand of them standing and cheering, and the defense trying to do it again. Fred Gatlin still in at quarterback for Nevada. It is a wild one, and who uh, you couldn't predict everything that we have seen in this game. You talk with people before the game, and they said, hey, Boise State's offense, uh, defense might have to score a couple times to keep them in the game. The wrong defense has been doing the scoring. It, the game has just been the other way around of what a lot of experts figured. Boise State offense 21, Nevada offense 6. Nevada defense 14. Here's a great block by Tony Wells, the much maligned uh, left tackle, Tony Wells. Nice who, tackle uh, by Scott Russell, too. Exactly, the ailing Scott Russell. Boy, the adjectives are pouring today. 
gain of seven for Ray Whalen there. Second and three, Wolfpack at their 38-yard line. And a little bit of a stressful situation now on the Wolfpack for the first time today. They trail for the first time. This is Whalen short of the first down at the 40. It'll be third and one. It'll be less than a yard. 11.05 left third quarter. Wolfpack, of course, not changing its game plan, trailing by one point. Still want to keep that running game going. Conditioning will really come into play here in the second half. Waylon looking for an opening, has to really look hard for an opening. Nevada, nearly 50%. This is third and one. He's not going to get it. Scott Russell knifes in, oh brings my. him down, and the Broncos stop him again. And the thing to remember about that three of eight on third down conversions is Nevada was three of four in the first period. They have missed five in a row now, and the Bronco defense oh, smiling man. when they come off after this one. Frank Robinson back in to return the punt this time. Ross Ortega standing at his 26-yard line. Broncos showing a 10-man front. Robinson back at his 25. Good rush. Solid kick, Robinson from the 30. 35 to the 40, an excellent start for the Bronco offense again. Their last possession began at the Nevada 40. This one will start at their own 40-yard line. We'll be right back. Ten minutes exactly, left third quarter. The Broncos in front for the first time this afternoon. Larry Manili and Tom Scott back with us. And David Tinkstad just rejoining the ball game. Has the lone setback now. Now Bart Hull shifts back into the slot. Has the eye back. Toss to Bart Hull. Broncos in a position now for the first time today where they can try to run the football, use the clock, and establish some field position. Try to control the ball. Bart got better yardage than it first appeared. Got four on the outside. You watch David Tingstad, he has been delivering great lead blocks for two years now. And another one, saving grace there, was that Frank Sullivan was able to knife through. Gain of four, second and six. Ball at the Bronco 44-yard line. Mike Wilson in the game for the first time. Broncos with three wide receivers. Wilson to the near side, and now four wide receivers as Winky shifts into the slot. Holiday to throw. He's got Sheldon Forehand, first down in Wolfpack territory at the 46. That one against Bernard Ellison, the three-time All-American. Anybody who knows the Dwayne Halliday story has to be happy for this guy. Jack Porter, despite the injury back in the lineup for the Broncos, as they have been giving Dwayne great protection since he came into the ballgame. Well, what makes you happy is the way Dwayne's handled himself. He's never hung his head. He's been a team player and accepted his role and stood ready. All right, Bronco, let's go, ready. Broncos now, first and 10 at the Wolfpack 46-yard line. Shovel pass, Larry Stainer to the 40. Gain of six. Broncos grinding it out. Now they give him to the 39. Gain of seven, almost eight. Well, this would be a big, big drive to push it right into Dwayne's the end been, zone. Dwayne's been doing this shovel pass for a long time. 87 as a freshman, he delivered a couple of nice ones to Jeff Lindsley, who was then the tight end. Dwayne knows the offense inside out. Second down, a long three at the Wolfpack 39-yard line. Broncos in a power set. Handoff to Bart Hull. Close to the first down, and Let's if he see, gets a good spot, he'll he have it. He got a good spot. He got a great spot from Frankie Reagan. And it'll be first down, Boise State. At the 35-yard line of Nevada. The Bronco fans at the lower right-hand corner here, standing, cheering. Those are the only ones <laughs> moving right now. It was so important for Boise State to take this crowd out of the ball game because this is probably the loudest the crowd has ever been at Mackey Stadium say this about the crowd at Nevada. They will get out of the game early. They go out quickly, but if the turn of events happens, they'll be right back in. There was a lot of grumbling here last week, even when they won over Furman. Chris Alt, we're told, went from being a hero to a goat two or three times <laughs> in the span of that yeah, second back half. Back to a hero with that great finish that Nevada had to win the game. 
The problem was last week, Nevada had a 13-7 lead, gave up three touchdowns in the third period. Here's Dwayne with great protection once again. I think his back foot may have slipped and uh, just a misfire there, so second and ten. Again, we talked about how the field will loosen up a little as the temperature rises through the afternoon after freezing overnight, and it will get a little soft. Second and ten. Halliday stepping up away from pressure, completes it to Mike Wilson, who makes the catch at the 29-yard line. Mike Wilson picking up where he left off last week against Middle Tennessee State. Two gigantic catches last week for the redshirt freshman from Nampa. Gain of six here. Could be the heir apparent to Terry Hefner's job next year. Great job by Dwayne of stepping into the pocket, letting the initial rush go by, and now the big third down. Third and four. Ball at the Nevada 29-yard line. Broncos leading by one. Halliday to throw. Overthrows Winky White on third down and the Broncos now will send Mike Black out I would presume. Nevada came with the blitz. Matt Clafton was in Halliday's face had to rush the throw and that's what made the overthrow an occurrence and now Mike will come on with the Broncos leading by one and this will be a 47 yard attempt. His career long is 48. His longest of this season is 47. He is four for five between 41 and 50 yards. Got a strong leg. Timeout, Time Nevada. Whoa, now this is interesting. Early third quarter, 7.35 to play. The Wolfpack burn a timeout, and we'll be right back. lined up in uh, the Beaver special, the Vandal special. Darren Lyle to run it, throws it, completed. First down, Broncos. The gadget play works again, and Scott Russell makes the reception. His first career reception. <laughs> Needless to say, unbelievable. Look at these two guys celebrate. Now twice, Darren Lyle has run this in the Beaver special and the Vandal special. The Wolfpack special is a pass, and we'll call that the first completion of Darren Lyle's career as a quarterback. In the shotgun, of course. Into double coverage. First down, Broncos, 14-yard line. Is this a team of destiny? We'll find out. Double tight ends. Bart Hull to the 10. Five. Touchdown, Broncos! Leaving Wolfpack tacklers in his wake. This crowd is absolutely stunned. Okay, look at the blocking here. Giacomazzo, Porter, great blocks. Tingstad didn't even have to make one. Bart bounces off Nevada tacklers and dances into the end zone, and the Broncos are up by seven. With a chance to make it eight and force Nevada to score twice to regain the lead. What a huge emotional swing in this third quarter. 7.03 to play. Black out of Terry Hefner's hole. Scott Russell, the long snapper, it's good. Kick is down. And oh, oh, oh. he was whipped it through there, but just barely. And the Broncos Hoyt, lead by eight. That's Hoyt Wil Wilhelm on the kick there for the Broncos with the knuckler. Boise State trailing 20 to 6 after a fumble was recovered in the Bronco end zone for a touchdown. Late in the third quarter, the Broncos bring on Dwayne Halliday. He drives them the length of the field in the final minutes of the half to pull the Broncos to 20 to 14. A muffed snap on a punt allows the Broncos to get great field position. Dwayne Halliday hits Winky White to put the Broncos ahead 21 to 20. The Wolfpack special converts a critical fourth down on the next play. Bart Hull is in, and in a stunning turnaround, it's Boise State 28 and Nevada 20. Mike Black about to kick it off. The Wolfpack crowd on their feet trying to act enthusiastic, but I must tell you, the heart has gone out of this crowd of 20,000 right now. They are stunned. Now, yeah, we were just reminded by Director Cal Humphreys that against Furman, uh, Furman scored three touchdowns in the third quarter to lead by a similar score, 28 to 20. 
and then uh, the Wolfpack came roaring back to tie the game and sent it into those three overtimes. So hang on to your hats. We might watch the far sideline too, looking for number 10, Chris Vargas, the redshirt freshman who relieved Tremel Taylor two weeks or last week. Mike Black trying to pop this one up, kicks it out of bounds. That's and the sky kick that uh, Mike used so effectively against Nevada in the first game at Bronco Stadium. Michael, you, go he'll, ahead, Larry. He'll have to kick it again. Sorry. You may remember that uh, Mike squibbed one in the first half. Of course, the goal here is to keep the ball out of Tramel Taylor's hands, or at least not give Tramel a running start. As you see, the 60-yard scoring drive in eight plays that give the Broncos the lead. Well, they're not going to take the uh, kick again. They're going to refuse the penalty and take the ball. And the, the roar is for Chris Vargas. On in relief of quarterback Fred Gatlin. Gatlin, a sophomore. Vargas, a redshirt freshman who rallied the Wolfpack to victory when Gatlin was injured in the fourth quarter a week ago against Furman. And Vargas rallied them to victory against the Idaho Vandals a couple of months ago here. Now he's got the same task ahead of him. Vargas rolling to throw. Delivers the pass. Caught by Ortega, who slips down, gives back a couple of yards, and then goes down at the 43-yard line. Gain of about seven. Amazing in the Division I AA semifinals, both teams making quarterback choices, making quarterback changes of their own choice. Not forced by injury, just by situation. Vargas trying to elude Anthony Brown slips, and that allows time for uh, the rest of the Broncos, Tim Langens included, to get back. Second and four at the 43 yard line. Vargas to throw again. The quick pass caught by Ortega and then dropped incomplete. Oh, and Vargas was leveled by Sean Anderson as he delivered that ball. Brock. The Broncos are getting a great pass rush all of a sudden now after. Okay, here's the end of the play. You'll see Sean Anderson. That's uh, a little bit late there. Yes, you want to be real careful with that kind of stuff. <laughs> it's a little bit late. Penalty now would really change the momentum that's been building in Boise State's favor. Third and four. Vargas to throw. Completed. Big gainer for Ortega. Anthony Brown trying to get him out of bounds and does inside the 25-yard line. Marcel King on coverage that time came all the way over from the other side of the field. At the snap, Ortega was uncovered and Marcel had to come all the way over and was really not ready to make this play. And a great catch by Ortega. Ortega got behind Marcel. Marcel a little bit confused on the play. Ball at the 21 yard line, first down, Wolfpack. Vargas checking off. Whalen hit behind the line of scrimmage and driven back by Scott Russell. Loss of one. Very important here that the Broncos up by eight. Forcing the Wolfpack to score twice or get a touchdown and a two-point conversion to tie, but we still have a lot of time left in this game. As you see, Scott Russell, the, uh, the heart leader, the heart and soul, shall we say, of the Boise State defense. Second team all big sky and a lot of people surprised by that. Keith Washington in there now at the running back slot for Whalen. Second and 11. Vargas gets a rush, tries to roll away from it. Down he goes and throws it away. Louis Ray and Eric Helgeson putting big pressure on, forcing the incompletion. Boy, Louis Ray, the junior from Denver, playing a great game this afternoon. High school teammate of Winky White. Montbello High School, and now a big third and 11 faced by the Wolfpack. I know we've talked about the number of seniors departing on this defense, but boy, the, the cupboard isn't exactly bare. When no. you look at guys like Louis Ray, who will be back, Chris Shepard, just a freshman out of Parma. Names like Brian Matson and Rob Gates and Matt McLaughlin and Scott Monk, who are going to be contributors for the next few years and may have to play big roles here today. Third and 11. Completed inside the 10. Incomplete, ruled incomplete. Well, Ortega, to see this one again. Ortega unable to hang on. And the Wolfpack will face fourth and 11. 
and probably have to settle for the field goal. A lot of missiles coming out of the south end zone. Now let's take a look at this. It looked like a catch, but we're pretty far away from the field up here. The delivery to Ortega. He's bobbling it here. He does not have control of the ball, and it hits the turf. He looks around Good real call. quick. You know he knew yeah. it was close. So Kevin McKelvey, who hit two field goals in the first quarter, is on to try one from 40 yards. Frank's going to do the alley-oop here. Kick is good. Nevada pulls within five on the 40-yard field goal by Kevin McKelvey, first-team All-Big Sky kicker. 5-16 to play. Bronco lead is 28-23 as they prepare to go back on offense. Larry Benili and Tom Scott with you again from Mackey Stadium in Reno. Nevada Wolfpack have just scored on a 40-yard field goal by Kevin McKelvey. And uh, the Broncos back on offense now. Chris Thomas from his two upfield to the 20, across the 20 to the 24-yard line. As Dwayne Halliday and the rest of the offense make their way back out on the field for this next possession of the third quarter. Jeff Mladenich conversing with Dwayne Halliday as Dwayne comes back on the field. Mike Verdon is at the other end of the field right now, stretching. Halliday hands to Thomas, fighting his way back to the line of scrimmage, may gain a yard and a half. Now the Nevada defense trying to get that momentum back. The crowd is back in the game as the zonies, as they are called in the south end zone, on their feet trying to disrupt the uh, Boise State uh, play calling. Thomas just kind of picking his way through there, looking for an opening to, to happen. It didn't. Settled for a yard gain. Second and a long eight. So look at what the Broncos are hearing from behind them. Halliday now to throw. Bart Hull. 25 and about the 27 yard line. Gain of a couple. It'll be third and long. Dwayne knew all the way that Bart was there. In fact, this place, this play was designed for Bart. It wasn't a screen, only one man out there, and that's tight end, or rather uh, center, Jack Porter. Good coverage, good reaction by the Nevada defense, and the Broncos now with third and seven at the 27-yard line. That's in the north end zone. <laughs> He's having fun. 350, third quarter. Halliday takes a timeout, doesn't like what he sees when he comes to the line of scrimmage. And the Broncos now, like Nevada, with two timeouts left in this football game. 28 to 23, Broncos lead. Nevada scored 23 points, which is the most this season against the Boise State defense, although 14 of those points were not scored against the Boise State defense, scored against the Boise State offense. Tom and I will visit with Skip Hall tomorrow night, and hoping very much we'll be looking forward to a game at Statesboro, Georgia next Saturday. This is Winky White, incomplete. And now the Broncos have their chance to disagree with an official's call, but they'll have to live with the incompletion. Mike Black on very quickly. Mentioned the Broncos coming back on their charter. I expect that they will be back in Boise sometime around 9 o'clock, landing uh, at a restricted area. So the uh, place to see the players and greet them will be at the Varsity Center. And of course, the parking lot's going to be full with a big crowd expected at the pavilion. Mike Black with a low snap gets the kick away and drives it over Ellison's head. He fields it at the 35, and now the coverage team takes Ellison out of bounds. Rob Draper knocks him out at the 44-yard line. That will start in great field position. Chris Vargas came in on the last drive and uh, took uh, the Wolfpack down to a field goal, and so now he'll have chance number two. Wolfpack now encouraging their fans to rise and cheer. They have billboards along the end zones, and the fans use those to make noise. They can do that, certainly, certainly. Vargas to throw on first down. Has the completion? No. Ball popped away from Scott Benning, incomplete. And he was hurried by Mr. Helgeson and Mr. Pantner. Jim Pantner in the game this afternoon for the first time, the senior out of Bora High School, who's had a real roller coaster season. 
but uh, knives through here. Watch him no, a lookout block by uh, center Mike McCone. <laughs> yeah, look out behind you, yeah. Vargas, two of six for 39 yards, but he did take uh, the pack down to a field goal on their last possession. Second and 10 at the 43-yard line. The hand to Whalen, caught from behind, and a face mask call. Oh, that's a tough one. Great stop by Eric Helgeson on the draw. Looked like a great call initially. You watch Whalen spun around. Vargas showing pass all the way. But look at the great stop by Eric Helgeson, but it was aided by the face mask. Is it flagrant or incidental? That's the question. Face mask on the defense, 15 yards, first down. Flagrant. It's a personal foul, 15 yards, and a first down for Nevada. That'll move it to the Bronco, 41-yard line. Very damaging penalty there. First down Wolfpack as they break the huddle. 3.23 left here in the third quarter. Well, he's fairly even for the day, as you see. Yardage as well. That perhaps hurting the most of any today for Boise State. Ray Whalen trying to work the left end. Not much there. About three yards. Clock continues to run as we approach the three-minute mark in the third period. BSU up by five. Boy, the momentum shifts have been just, been just incredible in this game. Right now, slightly a slight edge to Nevada. Darren Lyle on the tackle there. Be about the 240 mark when they snap the ball on this one here in the third quarter. Each team with two timeouts remaining. Broncos leading 28-23. Second and seven. Pass caught, completed to uh, Taylor. And he's taken down by Frank Robinson. Frank Robinson may have prevented uh, Trammell from getting the first down. The Broncos coming with a rare blitz that time. Vargas catching BSU in it and getting the ball off quickly to Taylor. Scott Russell and uh, Tim O'Connor both coming on the blitz for Boise State. The Broncos seldom do that. They play base defense most of the time. Third and less than a yard. Three of ten on third down conversions for Nevada. This one uh, is probably the easiest of the day. Not converted since the first quarter. Double tight ends. Ray Whalen may not have made it. Going to be close. I don't think he, well, no. I think he did. No. Floyd Dawson's marked it short and called it fourth down. The he ball has, it's up. back at the 32. He gained about the length of the football and needed about a yard. It's a tough spot for Nevada. It really is a big moment in this football game with a minute 25 left third quarter. Fourth and less than a yard, and the Wolfpack will go. Broncos running some defenders in there now, changing their look. Put on, baby. And they go on a quick snap, first down, and then some. Ray Whalen runs it across. Tim O'Connor really upset at the last minute changes that Boise State had to uh, had to make. And it took somebody out of position there. It may have been Tim himself. Gilkey trying to get his hands on the ball as he makes the stop. But Nevada with a first down at the BSU 26. Whalen 28 carries this afternoon for 81 yards. Beginning to roll up impressive numbers, but he hasn't broken anything big, and the Broncos have been able to keep the Wolfpack offense in control most of the day. First and 10, 50 seconds left, third quarter. Whalen again. There's the potential game breaker, and he's finally brought down by Tim Langens. Now, unless Nevada turns the ball over, they've got a three and they'd like to get a seven to take the lead again. Great job by the right side of the Nevada offensive line. Bill Branca, Shariar Perdanish. Shar Perdanish, a second team all big sky selection. Mike McCone, the center, first team all big sky. Alan Maxwell at guard, an honorable mention all big sky. Great offensive line. Ray Whalen. Oh, big tackle by Scott Russell at the line of scrimmage. Actually, yeah, I think he, he might have lost a half yard. Well, you look. 
You look at that offensive line of Reno's, they've got uh, two seniors, two juniors, and a sophomore. Everybody was blocked there except for Scott Russell, and that does it for the third quarter in the Division I AA semifinal. The Boise State Broncos, 15 minutes away from playing for a national championship, will be back for the fourth quarter right after this. Irvin Neely and Tom Scott with you, ready to start the fourth quarter of play in this semifinal game of the Division I AA playoffs. Boise State leading Nevada 28-23, and it's been every bit the great football game that we all expected. Wolfpack now on second and 10 at the Bronco 14. Ray Whalen trying to get outside. Darren Lyle had a face mask, and it Wayland pulled out of it and went for 10 more. There's a second flag on the field, though, if that's for another penalty. I think that might have been thrown at Darren Lyle's effort as well. Do we have two face masks on the play? Well, I think he saw the same thing. It was thrown quite a bit later. Face mask penalty, five yards of tacked on at the end of the run. Yeah. Same, same call. Five yards at the end of the run. So that'll be half the distance to the goal line. The ball will be at the two-yard line. First and goal, Nevada. The Broncos haven't allowed a touchdown by the Wolfpack offense through seven full quarters this season. They're going to be sorely tested now if they're going to keep that string going. Ray Whalen, the running back behind Chris Vargas, the redshirt freshman quarterback off the bench, trying to lead his team back on top. Whalen to the outside, touchdown Nevada. Nevada was going right much, of, or yeah, right much of the first half. They've been running to the left very effectively here in the second half. Whalen over 100 yards for the day, and the touchdown that gives the lead back to Nevada. Here we see it again. The left guard pulling and making a great block for Nevada Allen Maxwell. Now the Wolfpack will go for two. And the Broncos are down to one timeout. Broncos waste one, we'll take one as well. With 14.34 left here, we'll be right back. Nevada Wolfpack leading now 29-28, will go for two. One point lead or a two point lead. There's no difference there. They'd like to make it three and force the Broncos to a field goal to tie it. Vargas rolling left, looking back under pressure now, rolls away from the pressure, and it's going to be a foot race to the end zone. And he will win it. 31 28, Nevada. Great effort by the red shirt freshman quarterback, Chris Vargas. PSU defense did everything it could this time. Great rush put on Vargas by Todd Gilkey coming in from the left side. Also, Sean Anderson, now he reverses right. All the Broncos are in the left corner, and it, it is just there's just plenty of room for Vargas to make this play. Scott Russell is the only one with a chance. And the crowd is back in the game here at Mackey Stadium. Yeah, I told you, they come and go real quick down here. Broncos now just a field goal away from tying the game. And we should remind there is overtime in the playoffs. Should we finish the regulation time tied, they'd have a coin flip called by the Broncos, who would then have a decision whether to take the ball first or second, and they'd each start from the 25-yard line to either score or give the ball up on downs. And the other team gets a chance to do the same, and if they remain tied, they do it again until one team scores and the other doesn't. It's like baseball in that respect, top of the inning and bottom of the inning, except uh, the possessions can change, the order can change. The defense cannot score in an overtime. Here's an important return to get the Broncos in field position. David Tingstad back with Chris Thomas. And Thomas from the goal line, and he will not bring it out as he catches the ball in the end zone. Broncos will start at the 20 after Nevada's 57-yard drive in eight plays, four minutes off the clock. 
Very nice job by quarterback Chris Vargas. The backup, Fred Gatlin went out midway through the third quarter. Mike Burden went out late in the second quarter. Dwayne Halliday in now for Boise State once again as the Broncos start from their 20. 14-34 left in the game. Bronco offensive line has got to give some protection and open some running holes. Halliday to throw. Going to run. Out of bounds at the 23-yard line. Gain of three. Good job by the second there that time. Dwayne was looking for Winky White on Bernard Ellison. Great coverage by Ellison. And you can see Larry Stainer going into that middle zone. He was well covered by the linebacker, so Dwayne had to flush it out. And he gets about three. See the shadow begin to creep out, and it has reached midfield now with 14.26 to play. Winky into the slot. Hefner and forehand to the near side. Halliday wanted the quarterback draw, breaks the first tackle, and is going to get just half a yard, if that. Slipped down when he first tried to run that quarterback draw. You know which way the momentum has swung now <laughs> to the Nevada defense, which has already scored two touchdowns today. Nevada with just the four-man rush. First man to get there is Dio Ship. Then Matt Clafton really stacks him and now the Broncos with an important third down conversion facing third and six from their 24 yard line and the Broncos need to retain possession and move the football Winky White into the slot Tinkstad behind Halliday Halliday middle screen to Sheldon forehand across the 30 first down Boise State big first down when the Broncos first went to the middle screen in 1987, when they learned that play, it was usually for big yardage because it was a relatively new play at that time. Now it has become a very effective short yardage weapon for the Broncos. They use it to get first downs, much like this one. They've Boy, only scored one TD on it this season. Great block there by Dave Cook to provide the room for Sheldon Forehand to pick up the first down yardage. 13-20 to play. Broncos at their 31. Halliday to throw again. Has it batted down, almost intercepted by Joe Caspers, who ran one in for a touchdown in the first half. Nevada going with a five-man rush on first down as we watch Bart Hull in isolation. Bart Hull Boy, saying, me, me, me. But really, to, to Halliday's uh, defense, he had no time to look. 13-15. And the Nevada Wolfpack up 31-28. Second and 10, Boise State. Thomas and Tingstad, the running backs. Halliday trying to let things develop. Throws it into traffic, and it's knocked down, incomplete, <laughs> intended for Winky White. No flags. Winky looking pleadingly at the official. I don't know what kind of a timing hit that was. We'll have to see it again. Looks like Matt Clafton, the linebacker, may have gotten there a little bit early. Here you see it from the end zone. You see Clafton in coverage. Stainer goes by him, and now Winky comes underneath. Tough to tell. Risky play, but he made it work. Reaching around from the backside on a guy like that, you're going to get called a lot, but he didn't that time. 31-28 with 13.08 to play. Broncos with third and 10 at their 32-yard line. Halliday under pressure from Caspers. Gets away, throws back, and has Mike Wilson for the first down. Breaks a tackle and almost got free down the sideline. You're going to have to believe me when I tell you I saw Mike Wilson up top one-on-one -on -one, and I thought about Mike Wilson and the clutch catches that he has made this season and that it was probably time for him again what a great job by Dwayne Halliday after the initial rush to look back all the way across the field and see a wide open Mike Wilson well it takes a little arm strength just to get that ball there that's about a 50 60 yard pass Brock Marion was way downfield Halliday 11 of 1673 yards first down Broncos Wolfpack 47 the toss to Chris Tom Thomas, nothing there. Well, the running game is not happening. The Broncos have to keep attempting it, though, in order to set up the play action. 
Stadium record. The last three times the Broncos have been here, they have set a stadium record. 19,776. The Wolfpack filled everything in the stadium, so the capacity is not 20,000 because <laughs> there is no, there is not a seat to be found here. Second down and 10. Broncos show the power set with Ryan Teal in there. The toss to Bart Hull, who looked like he wanted to throw a pass. He's trapped behind the line of scrimmage and down at midfield. Bart gave the look of a guy who was thinking downfield. It, it, I, I'm not sure that wasn't a broken play. I can't imagine they wanted to run anything like that. But somebody didn't miss an assignment. He, I think Bart's just looking for somewhere to run. Blocking really breaks down on the right-hand side of the Bronco offensive line, so Broncos at midfield need to get a first down or else they, they have to punt the ball back. Third, well, they have to. third and 13 at the 50. Birds heading south. Come on, oh, they can winter well if the weather doesn't change go, go, go. much from here. Oh, the last timeout has been called by Boise State. They have none now. The Broncos left. are really going to be facing a desperate situation as they waste their last timeout. And we'll be right back. Some people will do anything for a free ticket. The Wolfpack were beaten by a thousand people or so who sat behind this fence and peered in. So they put that blue uh, shield up. Now they're uh, sitting on top of mobile homes. Broncos now on third and 13 from midfield. Halliday to Terry Hefner. Complete 30, 25. First down Broncos at the 23 yard line. Does anybody have any fingernails left back in Boise, Idaho right now? Well, you know, well, you can be semi-critical as we questioned the use of that last time out, but when you get that kind of call and that kind of execution. And that kind of protection from the offensive line and that kind of delivery from Dwayne Halliday to his roommate, Terry Hefner. That play working to perfection, and oh. they, the timeout at least accomplishes what the Broncos needed, which was get in field goal range. First down, 23-yard line. They're not thinking field goal yet, though. Handoff, David Tinkstad. Broncos with double tight ends on that play. But uh, Tingstad once again having a little bit of trouble with his footing. A gain of two to the 21. It's a problem, been a problem for David today. How, about how many big third down conversions on this drive? The third huge third down conversion for Boise State on this drive that started on the BSU 20, as you say, see David Tingstad at the end of that play. 11-15 left in the game. Second and eight now for the Broncos. From the Nevada 21, well within Mike Black's range. Winky White shifts into the slot. Four wide receivers go into the corner for Mike Wilson, and he can't make the catch. Overthrown, incomplete. By that time, the blitz works once again. As Dave Norman, the linebacker, was the first man to get there. Nevada bringing six. You see Norman coming from the top of your screen, and Dwayne just had to deliver it in a hurry, but almost right on the money. And if you're going to miss, that's the way to miss with that pass. Miss yes. long so that you don't lose field position or surrender the football on a turnover. 10.59 left. Could it be another third down for Boise State? Third and eight from the 21-yard line. Broncos need to get almost to the 13. Halliday with a quick snap. Straight down the middle, Winky White, completion. First down and goal inside the 10. Dwayne Halliday with a magnificent job that time of looking off the rushers to Chris Thomas. Chris Thomas had flared out to the left. Dwayne, watch Dwayne here at the last minute look over left to Chris Thomas. Everybody looks Chris Thomas's way. Winky on the slant gets the first and goal at the Nevada 7. Isolation on Winky. Working but, on all Big Sky cornerback oh Brock God. Marion, who didn't have a chance. Oh, is that on the money or what? First and goal Broncos at the seven yard line. The toss to Bart Hull. Trying to fight off a tackler, goes down for no gain. Touchdown Bart, scored three against Nevada in November and had the uh, go ahead touchdown in this one. And now a timeout called. Is it a Bronco? So or a pack uh, team member. It's a, a Wolfpack player down on the field on the far sideline. 10.31 to play. The Broncos knocking on the door one more time. 
Looks like we'll take a timeout while they attend to the Wolfpack player. We'll be right back. Boise State trying to move the ball into the end zone one more time and regain the lead. Nevada's all big sky defensive tackle Neil Hulbert has been helped off the field injured. The Broncos now with second and goal at the six yard line. Dwayne Halliday to throw, rifles it into the end zone. Touchdown Broncos, Terry, Terry Hefner. Hefner. What a catch, what a throw, what a performance here this afternoon by senior quarterback Dwayne Halliday, who has the Broncos in front again. Dwayne Halliday, 14 of 19 for 223 yards and three touchdowns. What a, what a big extra point this is for Mike Black with the Broncos leading by three, trying to get it up to four. And what a drive by Boise State. Hefner will hold the snap from Scott Russell. <laughs> can look only one place and that's down at those dependable hands of number 85. The kick is partially blocked but it goes through and the Broncos get a four point lead which is extremely big. The Wolfpack must take it to the end zone to get back in front. You remember the Wolfpack's last possession 57 yards on eight plays. The, the Wolfpack retook the lead and the momentum on the two point conversion by Chris Vargas. Then the Broncos go on an 80-yard drive and convert four third downs. Look at Halliday looking for Hefner. He first looks off his primary receiver, the receiver, sees Terry on the slant. What a great catch as he was being grabbed by Bernard Ellison, the All-America cornerback for the University of Nevada. Oh, I hear Jack Harvey game. starting to yell down there. He's raising his voice. <laughs> and a couple thousand people waving orange pom-poms are raising themselves to Look, their feet. What a tremendous football game. Skip Hall talking to Dwayne Halliday, and there is a guy for you, ladies and gentlemen. There is a guy who hung in there and could be, well, he win or lose, he is a hero today, Dwayne Halliday. Talk about what athletics is supposed to mean and the importance of building character. Tough There's to even a, look at him, isn't it? A mountain of a man right there. Where's he hitting him? 10-25 to play, and what will the strategy be on this kickoff? The Broncos have tried a little bit of everything. Mike Black rips it over Brock Marion's head into the, or excuse me, Trumel Taylor's head and into the end zone. And the that Wolfpack was, <laughs> will start from their 20. <laughs> you know, the sky kick, Broncos have been using the sky kick. Trumel Taylor finally cheats up to about the 15-yard line, and Mike booms it. Of course, ideally, you're hoping there that the ball pops at the 10-yard line and, and maybe settles right. there, and you got a chance either to recover or pin them even deeper. It is a live ball. But you'll certainly take 80 yards away from the touchdown. Four minutes and 10 seconds possession for the Broncos on that last drive. Finest drive of the season, Just you have to think. Brilliant execution by Dwayne Halliday, and now Chris Vargas faced with doing the same. The handoff. Whalen wrestled down. Boy, Whalen, what a workhorse. Over 30 carries on the day for Ray Whalen. Did not play against the Broncos in November. It's came back like a, a wildfire here in the playoffs for the Wolfpack. The Wolfpack have two timeouts left. The clock not a factor yet. Ten minutes exactly to play. Nevada trailing by four. Vargas to throw. Big rush, gets it off, completed. And Washington. Great job by Keith Washington to get out of the tackle by Tim Langens and make it third and short instead of third and medium. Look at the rush here put on Vargas by Todd Gilkey. Todd Gilkey in his face. Todd's blocked a lot of passes this season, could not get his hands on that one. And then Langhands hanging on for dear life. So here comes a third down conversion the other way. It's been a day of huge third down conversions for both teams. Third and two, quick snap. Whalen hit behind the line, breaks a tackle, pops it loose and might go all the way. scrimmage and he burst outside and went the distance. The Broncos hit instead of wrap up here. He actually runs into his own man. 
So the Broncos didn't even have a chance to wrap up. Broncos stacking the line of scrimmage on third and short. Suddenly, there's nobody left. Seventy-two yards for Ray Whalen. Oh my. 9.05 left. <laughs> An eternity. McKelvey's kick is good. The Wolfpack lead by three again. Wolfpack not chancing with the two point conversion. Leaving the Broncos one point short. Here we'll get a, we may get a better look at it here. We'll see how the Broncos stack the line of scrimmage. Tim O'Connor shoved a Nevada player into Ray Whalen. That forced him back. When he went to the outside, the Broncos players had pinched in so far that there was nobody left, and the speed of Anthony Brown cannot even catch Ray Whalen. Yeah, brought that crowd alive, didn't he? Boy. 38-35. My goodness, what more can we ask? It's Dwayne Halliday in the Bronco offense. Halliday with three touchdown passes and a long completion that set up a short touchdown run. Since coming on for Mike Verdon, midway through the second quarter. It's a great ball game, especially if you're not rooting for either team. If you're not rooting for either team, you are standing up and sitting down. And it's just been terrific college football. Shame either one of these teams has to lose this football game. There are going to be some mighty sad seniors on one side of the field. We don't know which side it will be yet. Broncos with 18 of them this season. Somebody's going to Statesboro, Georgia next Saturday to play Georgia Southern for the national championship live on national TV. And the issue is very much in doubt. Kevin McKelvey to kick it off. Kenny Keel standing behind Chris Thomas inside the five. And he rips it down the middle. Swings a little left. Thomas downs it in the end zone. Broncos will start from their 20. Fortunately, the momentum of the ball carried into the end zone, so Chris uh, was not in danger of giving up a safety there. Now, the Broncos in a little different situation than Nevada was when they took the field. Boise State can tie the game with a field goal. Nevada needed the touchdown to go ahead because the field goal would have left them a point short. Nine minutes and five seconds left. There could be a slew of field goals before regulation even runs out. But the Broncos easily 50 to 60 yards from field goal range. Halliday now on first down from the 20. And remember, no timeouts. And Winky White behind the defense, caught at the 38-yard line. And Halliday strikes again. Dwayne Halliday having the game of his career. It may or may not be his last, but it'll be the one most remembered. <laughs> this. I well, think we're caught in the twilight zone here. This is just look incredible. Look at this catch by Winky, and that looks a lot like the catch made in November on the first play from scrimmage by Boise State. 265 yards now in less than two quarters for Dwayne Halliday. And in one play, he has them very close to field goal range again. First down at the Nevada 38. Play action fake. Halliday looking, looking. Finally goes short to Thomas. 35, 30, 25 bounds inside the 25-yard line. Just a great read by Halliday. And Chris Thomas used the uh, natural grass field to his advantage that time. This is supposed to be Boise State's disadvantage because they play on the blue turf. This time, watch what happens to Matt Clafton as he tries to come up and make the play on Chris Thomas. Here's the little swing to Thomas. Chris makes the catch. Matt Clafton slips just enough to allow Chris to accelerate and get the yardage down to the 23. That was worth another 10 yards. The Broncos now within Mike Black's range. It would be a 40-yard attempt if they make no more. They want it all. Bart Hull. Great job by Bart just to get three out of that. Nevada coming with a five-man rush again on first down. Frank Sullivan coming from the outside, but the Broncos going the other way. This is not a game for the faint of heart. Backup linebacker Steve Bryant in the game now, a redshirt freshman for Nevada. He fought off the block of D Dave Giacomazzo to make that play. 
three. This has all happened <laughs> in a minute and five seconds since the Broncos took possession. With no timeouts. Halliday. Oh, going to the end zone. Terry Hefner did a short route and uh, Dwayne read it long and fortunately overthrew Brock Marion incomplete. So it'll be third and seven. Dwayne throwing the ball away on second and seven. Nevada blitzing once again. Nevada came with the blitz all day against the Broncos in Boise last month. Doing it, get, doing it again now with linebacker Matt Clafton. How many times do we call Clafton's name today? And Mike Black readying himself on the sideline. Already Boise State's career leader in field goals made. Halliday on third and seven under the rush. Throws to the end zone for Winky, who's bumped. Can't make the catch and no flag. Winky couldn't make the catch and no flag. Brock Marion going for the ball with Winky, and I'm sure that's what the official rules is that both players were going for the ball. Let's see what it looks like as we get a, a second look at it. Boy, nice, yeah. nice touch by Dwayne. And Winky very nearly comes down with this ball. That. Mike Black to attempt a 38-yard field goal out of Terry Hefner's hole. This would tie the game. 7.41 to play. Kick is up. It's good. 7.37 left. We are tied at 38, and we'll be right back. another look at the guys most involved in this field goal attempt it's almost like go, a little go, guy go. can't see over that offensive line Hefner lets him know it was good and everybody else cheers him on we are tied 737 to play as black prepares to kick it off Tremel Taylor the deep man standing inside his own 10 yard line our statistician Andy Artis is beginning to run out of paper our thanks to him for another great effort running out of paper myself just keeping track of the scoring Tramel Taylor trying to cut it back against the grain and is hit and stopped Scott Monk the freshman from Capitol High 21 yard line Wolfpack back on offense they have two timeouts with half this quarter yet to play we've already seen three touchdowns and a field goal and a two-point conversion in this quarter alone. The Broncos have none. Backup quarterbacks, the story of the day. Chris Vargas now for the University of Nevada. Bronco defense trying to make a stand. Ray Whalen hit by Helgeson and several others. Keep it up, D. Keep it up. See Eric Knife in. That's Sean Anderson, 97. 91 is Gilkey. 44 is Russell. Names you've grown accustomed to, some will be back next year, some will not. Some will be, some may be back next week. <laughs> and that is the issue right now. Georgia Southern destroyed Central Florida in the second half today. And Clock has not started, it did not run on that last play. It is running now. Pass oh. caught and uh, Taylor breaks a tackle and He'll gain about five. Come on, man. Come on. John Let's Anderson go, celebrating the short gain by Tramel Taylor, and now another one of those huge third down plays. Give another look at Eric Helgeson. We haven't had a chance to call his name much for pressure. Well, that looks he like is, holding, uh, he has uh, held a little bit there. This will give you some understanding of why it can be frustrating and why a guy will sometimes disappear for plays on end. Helgeson double teamed right now. 640 to play. Third down and five. Vargas has Ortega first down at the 35. Great effort by Ortega. Simple down and out just to go across the uh, marker. And the rollout by Vargas buys him just enough time. Ortega tiptoeing at the sideline. Only one foot necessary inbounds in college football. So a fresh start for the Wolfpack. 6.34 to play. They have two timeouts, as we've said. The Broncos have none. We're tied at 38. 
And if you just joined us, you have missed a whale of a football game in the first three and a half quarters. But fortunately, you're not going to miss the rest of it if you stick around. Ray Whalen on first down, a good surge by the middle of the Nevada offensive line. Getting uh, the Wolfpack five yards. Sean Anderson muscled out of the way. Tony Hernandez on the hit. We had breakfast across the table from Tony's parents who were up and excited about this one like everybody else is who has some kind of connection to this Boise State group. Ray Whalen, 35 carries, 184 yards, and a 72-yard touchdown included. Clock at six minutes and running. Whalen breaking free again, and in the secondary, Frank Robinson has him cornered, and uh, Anthony Brown and Rod Johnson help run him out of bounds, but not before he gets to the Bronco 33-yard line. Just when you think the Boise State defense has the uh, Nevada running game bottled up, it happens again, and the Wolfpack threatening. They are within field goal range for Kevin McKelvey. His long is 52 against Northern Arizona in the opening game of the season right here at Mackey. It would be a 50-yarder from uh, this point of the field, so the Broncos must stiffen now. 5.51 left. Scoreboard says happy holidays indeed. <laughs> Somebody's going to have one. Vargas now checking off at the line of scrimmage on first down. Keith Washington hit and breaks the tackle of Scott Russell. No, it, check it. It's uh, Eric Helgeson who had him wrapped up, and he carried it on for three or four more yards. Wolfpack can afford to be very patient here. They don't need to go to the air now. They can grind it out a little bit. If they get one more first down, they're in very good position. Well, and they're eating up a lot of clock with this drive, and Boise State's enemy now is the clock because of the lack of timeouts left. And the Wolfpack using every bit of the 25-second clock. Whalen over the 200-yard mark today. He had 211 in their first two playoff games. Get that ball back now. Vargas on the rollout, completed to Taylor inside the 15. Ball is loose. No, it's ruled down. Timmy Langhans came up with a football, but the rule is oh, down my. by contact with the ground, and the ground cannot cause a fumble. I think it was actually Joe King who made the catch. It's a first down for Nevada. Let's take another look and see what we can see here. Drake's. Mel Taylor. Oh, boy, that's uh, close. That is close. They may have ruled his hip down before the ball came loose. Wolfpack, first down, Bronco 13-yard line. That was a very close call and one that could swing the fortunes of one of these teams. Vargas checking off again. Whalen to the 10. Four and a half minutes left. Broncos could use a turnover here. I don't know if Nevada will risk a pass again. Right up the middle with the pulling guard, Bill Branca, in there once again. Second and seven, 4-0-2, clock running. Whalen, no, Vargas on the rollout. Touchdown, Wolfpack. Chris Vargas runs it in. What a great call. What a drive by the University of Nevada. Drive after drive. Resetting the 25 second clock. Three minutes and 55 seconds left. The Wolfpack up 44-38. McKelvey trying to make it a seven point lead and the Broncos will have one more chance. Kick is good. Nevada by seven. What a game. What a game. Well, 
While the Wolf cheers and runs in front of the stands, Sox waits in anticipation out in the left end zone with Cindy Roberts in the saddle. Speaking of the end zone, the fans going nuts for the University of Nevada right now. 45 to 38, the Broncos need a touchdown and an extra point to send this one into overtime. But stranger things have happened. Skip Hall encouraging his senior dominated offense and defense. This has been a team that has never quit on itself. They came back at Montana State when several times it looked like things were impossible. Scored in the final minute, one on the road, on a grass field, in a hostile situation. This time, just good. They, they would just go for the tie. If they can get into the end zone to send this game into overtime. And the Broncos obviously hoping for a big return. Have David Tinkstad back now with uh, the Tinkstad? Yeah, yeah. Tinkstad with, hiding behind Chris Thomas. Chris Thomas. And then they will uh, separate at the last minute so that McKelvey will have trouble making a decision on to where to kick the ball. Tinkstad, of course, does not have the great speed. Uh, yes, obviously the Broncos would like to have the ball in Thomas's hands. I wonder why Kenny Keel isn't back. Kicks it down the middle, and Thomas from the goal line will bring it out this time. 10, 15, 20 to the 21-yard line. I don't think Chris is running with a lot of confidence right now. That's not the Chris Thomas that was all big sky, but he will stay in the game because it is crunch time. Dwayne Halliday back out for the Broncos. Dwayne 16 of 24 for 275 yards and three touchdowns off the bench. White and Terry Hefner, the wide men behind him, gets some protection. Delivers to Hefner out to the 37 yard line. First down. Broncos trying to use the sideline out of timeouts. 343 left in the game now. My goodness. Once again, BSU needs a touchdown as to Skip Hall looks on. Protection here as Nevada brings five once again. Great blocking by Giacomazzo and a great delivery on the money once again by Dwayne Halliday. Broncos out to the 37 yard line. Now it's Sheldon Forehand and Winky White. Forehand at the bottom of the screen to the near side. Tinkstad into the slot now. And Bart Hall behind Halliday. Winky White in the flat. 40-yard line, great stutter step out to the 45, 46. And once again, another case where the Broncos use the grass field to their advantage, taking advantage of the questionable footing. Now that the uh, field is engulfed in shadows, the field is becoming hard again. Halliday using the center of the field, but Winky using the sidelines, and two plays have used only 21 seconds. Broncos actually, if they can get close to the end zone, don't want to leave enough time on the board for Nevada. 3.34. Clock stopped when Winky went out of bounds. Halliday to throw. In traffic, down at his own 42. Loss of five. Clock and will run now. It will be third down, but the Broncos are in two down territory. There is little doubt that Boise State would go for it on fourth down here. Third and five. That was just a great job by the uh, Nevada defensive line to flush things out. Joe Caspers is having a great game for the Wolfpack. Makes the stop. Halliday now on third and five. Winky White to the near side. Sheldon forehand at the top of the screen. The wide man left. Thomas and Tingstad behind Halliday, who gets a big rush. Throws back to the middle. Has Thomas wide open. He's got it. First down, Broncos, 35-yard line, flagged down at midfield. Ineligible receiver downfield may be the call, but it is probably going to go against Boise State. Dave Giacomazzo, extremely upset. They caught him at the 48-yard line. The line of scrimmage was the 42. That is the call. That's the call. Ineligible man downfield. Halliday scrambling, and the lineman sneaking across the, the uh, yardage line. Line of scrimmage. So the Broncos lose the big first down pickup and will have to do it again. And again, they're in two down territory. 
2.44 left in the game. It's Nevada 45, Boise State 38. Lloyd Dawson explaining things to center Jack Porter. An eligible receiver, five yard penalty, still third down. Third and 10 now. Broncos at their own 37 yard line. I'll give you another look. Halliday is running for his life and then he spots Chris Thomas at the last second. Little did Dwayne know that the Broncos had an ineligible man downfield. What a great catch Boy, by Thomas. Oh, Thomas, that one hurts. Thomas makes a great catch in traffic. It goes for not four wide receivers, third and ten. Halliday gets protection, going deep for Sweeting. Tipped away, Winky catches the deflection. Winky White catches the deflected pass oh. off teammate Chris Sweeting, oh. and the Broncos are right there again. It was deflected off a Wolfpack player as well, I believe. This is almost a Hail Mary type In pass. In fact, it is off of the hands of Brock Marion. Into the hands of Winky White, the Broncos are on the 19, as Winky was saying, come on down. Two minutes and 12, 10 now. Clock moving, Broncos with no timeouts. Trailing by seven. I wonder if, well, I'm not even gonna speculate on the conversion. Oh, uh, you go for one. Are you talking about what? I'm talking about winning it and not taking it into overtime with a hostile crowd. First, they've gotta get in the end zone. Halliday, tipped away, incomplete. And maybe the last 300 yard day of his career. Second and 10 now from the 19-yard line. The Broncos trying to get even or ahead. Middle screen. Sheldon forehand breaks a tackle. 15 out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Turned disaster into a six-yard game. Third and short in two-down territory. Stopped the clock at 138 by the, getting out of bounds. The Broncos can't afford to run the ball here. We could see it's difficult to see from the field. The rush is there because the middle screen was being set up. Sheldon Forehand coming behind the line of scrimmage, behind the offensive line. For, forehand just does a great job of breaking the tackle. The and Broncos, then he gets out of bounds. Broncos can afford to run the ball here. 138, third and three. That's Ryan Teal. Double tight ends now. Chris Thomas needing three. Powers it inside the 10, close to the first I down. I think he's spot. got it. I think we've got first and goal. Clock moving, now it's stopped. 129 while they measure the first down yardage. Big Sky Commissioner Ron Stevens in our booth, smiling ear to, de ear to ear at Big Sky football. I mean, I'm just letting our director, Cal Humphreys, know that I picked up my ba backup microphone and handed it to the commissioner. If we can activate that, we might talk about what an exciting day it's been for the Big Sky Conference and what a statement about the quality of football, Ron. I just hope, Larry, that, uh, that either team hasn't left at all here today because this is, it's, uh, it's on. Play next week after playing like they had to play today to whoever is It is first down for Boise State first, inside the nine yard line. First and goal with 129. Uh, apparently, we had some problems with that first mic. Try that second one, Ron. Uh, Larry, I just said it's going to be that the way both teams play no, today. It's is not good. working either. We'll try to get a word with Ron uh, just a little bit later. Clock moving again, 118, Broncos first and goal. Halliday play fake, looking to the end zone, now running for his life to the 10. Out of bounds. Woo, he got out of bounds, and that was big. 107 to play, and Halliday is really shaken up. Halliday went hard to the ground. Ron, I'll tell you what, Tom, Tom Scott's gone to the sidelines and is going to interview Skip Hall when this game is over. And uh, we wait for a little bit of word on Dwayne Halliday's condition. He got out of bounds and stopped the clock with 107. The ball is spotted at the seven yard line, so he picked up two. And now tell me what you think about the quality of Big Sky football, because you've got to be just thrilled with the way these teams have played today. Here's where Dwayne gets hit and gets out of bounds. He's trying to get out of bounds, as you can see, and finally does. 
But this has really got to be one of the uh, all-time best uh, football games I think we've had in the history of the Big Sky Conference. I guess we're having all kinds of equipment problems. Tom Scott's headset's gone out now. Well, Larry, I just said it's uh, it's too bad either team has to lose this game because this is uh, this is what college football is all about. It just doesn't get any better than this. 107. The Broncos with second and goal, and Mike Verdon off the bench to try and punch it in and tie this football game. Verdon to throw. Looking, 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 running away from pressure. He's got an open field. Through it, touchdown Broncos! Ryan Teal! 59 seconds left, and Mike Verdon has pulled the Broncos to within one point, and now the decision. And it looks like the Bronco coaches are holding up one finger. They're going to tie the game with Mike Black's kick. Timeout, Nevada. They have one left. Oh, my. What a throw by Mike Verdon. That's Mike Verdon's first pass since the middle of the second quarter. You saw him warming up. He had three or four throws, chased by pressure, and it looked like he had open field if he'd run. But look at the throw by, oh, and the catch by Ryan Teal. And all kinds of garbage thrown out of the end zone by the people known as the Zonies here who are acting like loonies. Police out trying to uh, keep them in order a little bit. Emotions running extremely high for obvious reasons. This game means everything to both these teams. Fifty nine seconds left. And I'm not sure, well, Mike Black's still loosening up. I don't know how serious the debate is that might be raging about whether to go for two or not. There's Dwayne Halliday, and what a terrific performance he's given here today. Shaken up after a run for two-yard gain, replaced then by Mike Verdon, who throws his only pass of the second half for a touchdown to Ryan Teal. 59 seconds left, and this kick is the season for the Broncos. So routine, but so much pressure here. Penalty flag. Delay of game. 25 second clock ran out. The Broncos will lose five. Delay of game, no idea. Delay of game on the offense, five yard penalty, repeat the kick. In some ways, that may not be all bad because a field goal is oftentimes a better angle than a, than a point after kick. And if Scott Russell wasn't comfortable, the last thing that the Bronco coaches want him to do is snap the ball too quickly. Well, here we go. From the 15. Everything works to perfection, and we are tied again with 59 seconds left. I don't know what more you could say about a game like this. It just doesn't get any better, as Commissioner of the Big Sky Conference has just shared with us. Dwayne Halliday trying to get loose on the sidelines. You saw him administering a, a little bit of an ice pack. and Question mark, you know, about what Skip Hall does if you get into overtime, when you get into overtime. If Halliday isn't 100%, do you come back with Verdon? You certainly want the guy who's physically capable out there. And Verdon, if he had emotional downs earlier in this half, certainly has to be feeling good about himself right now after coming off the bench when Halliday's shaken up and throwing the tying touchdown pass. Remember as well, Verdon for the day, by the way, is 7 for 14, 99 yards. Halliday, 19 for 29, 359 yards. Verdon with one touchdown pass, Halliday with three. 
And remembering, as I started to say, that Tremel Taylor is the first team, all big sky, kick return specialist. His longest kickoff return is 26 in the postseason, but he had a 98 yarder in the regular season. And if he returns this one, he's going to have to come out of the end zone. He chooses not to. So the Wolfpack will start at their 20 with. Now, the scoreboard shows two timeouts, but that's got to be wrong because they burned one early in the second half, and then they used one before Black's conversion. Two is correct, I'm told. 59 seconds is the important number. The Bronco defense trying to shut the door and get into overtime. The Wolfpack, well, you can hear the crowd reaction. They don't like it a lot. Broncos can't stop the clock, so there's no risk to Nevada by running the football. 40 seconds left. Clock continues to move. Vargas now with two wide men. That's Ortega to the near side at the bottom of your screen, and Taylor wide right. Flag thrown at the ball snap. Pass incomplete. We'll wait for the indication on what the penalty is. Illegal procedure, five yard penalty. Illegal procedure on the offense, refused. Declined by the Broncos. So bring up to date on Ray Whalen, who now has 38 carries, 221 yards. What an afternoon. Third and nine now for the Wolfpack from their 21 yard line. Ron Stevens has just handed me Appendix F of the Division I AA football rules, and that's the tiebreaker plan for Division I AA. Long ago, and you might have thought I was premature when I said it, but I explained some of the procedure to you. If the Broncos can escape this final 27 seconds, and Nevada's just called a timeout with 27 seconds left, if the Broncos escape this situation and get into overtime, there'll be a three-minute wait while the teams go to their sideline, captains will go to the center of the field, and the Broncos will call the to coin toss. Whoever wins the coin toss will have the choice of taking the football first or second. Going to be a big day on the Boise State campus. The football team, as I said, will be arriving home probably late second half as the Bronco basketball team is playing Utah State in the pavilion. So let's be uh, exercising a lot of patience and caution in your cars and around the uh, varsity center area as the, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people, if they don't leave the pavilion, coming from their homes to greet this football team, win or lose, for just a tremendous effort here this afternoon. Back to the uh, tiebreaker procedure. The coin toss will establish first possession, and the ball will be placed at the 25-yard line where the first team will either score or lose the ball on downs. The defense cannot score. The second team will then have its chance. Third and nine from the 21, and the Wolfpack are going to settle for overtime. Vargas downs the ball, and the final 19 seconds will run off. And now we'll have our first Big Sky overtime game for the Broncos since 19... 88 when they beat Northern Arizona. We will be right back for the extra period right after this. Well, the officials are huddling at center of the field just to be sure that they all understand the procedures that will be employed in this overtime tiebreaker. Here's how we got to overtime. Field goals of uh, 39 and 43 yards by Kelvin, uh, Kevin McKelvey gave Nevada a 6-0 lead after the first quarter. Joe Caspers intercepted Mike Verdon, ran it 25 yards to the end zone, 13-0 after the conversion. Chris Thomas, one-yard run, set up by a 29-yard pass from relief quarterback Dwayne Halliday to Terry Hefner. That made it 13-0. 
13-7. Verdon's fumble recovered in the end zone by the Nevada defense. Kick made it 20-7. Halliday then drove the Broncos 80 yards, scoring with less than a minute left to get a 2014 deficit. 30-yard touchdown pass to Winky White. 33 seconds left in the half. Third quarter, all Broncos. Halliday to White, 44 yards. Broncos took the lead. Bart Hull on a 14-yard run. It was an eight-point advantage. Kevin McKelvey's field goal made it a five-point Boise State lead. Ray Whalen in the fourth quarter, a two-yard run. Vargas ran in the two-point conversion, 31-28, Nevada. Halliday, six yards to Terry Hefner, 35-31 Broncos. Whalen with a 72-yard run to take Nevada back on top. Mike Black's 38-yard field goal tied it at 38. Vargas, a 10-yard run, 45-38 Nevada. Verdon to Ryan Teal, seven yards, tied at 45 with 59 seconds left. Now we go to the end zone at the right side of your screen. The Broncos have won the coin toss. They will play defense first. Furman blew it last week. They had the Wolfpack beaten. Nevada threw an interception in their first opportunity. Furman came out, tried to get fancy and run some offense, and lost the football. Skip Hall made it clear at an NCAA meeting that Tom Scott and I attended with the coaches and the officials last night that given the opportunity, he would kick it instantly. You don't mess around in overtime. This is not like the NFL where it's sudden death and the first score wins it. This is first down Nevada at the 25-yard line. They will give up the ball on downs or score, and then the Broncos will have their chance. Chris Vargas with double wide receivers. It is first and 10, a handoff to Ray Whalen, trying to get outside, driven out of bounds after a couple of yards gained. Second down and eight. Make it second and eight is right. They can get a first down. Solid defense there as the Broncos slide the line of scrimmage as the play begins to unfold. Second and eight. Chris Vargas now with double wide receivers to the right. Taylor inside Ortega. Vargas rolls the other way. Helgeson all over him. And Vargas in big trouble now runs it back up the middle. Takes it to the 15. He'll have a first down at the 12-yard line. Helgeson put great pressure on him, but Vargas ducked in between two Broncos and squirted free for a first down. First down Nevada, 12 yard line as Vargas carries it inside the 15. Ray Whalen tripped up at the line of scrimmage by Sean Anderson. Football loose. What's the call? Ruled down. No fumble. Whalen was tripped up by Sean Anderson. Dove into the line. The, remember, the ground cannot cause a fumble. Second down and 10 at the 12-yard line. Three wide receivers now to the left. Marcus rolls that way. Throw short. Tipped away. And nearly intercepted, but it's incomplete, and it'll be third down. This Bronco defense, which went so long without giving these guys a touchdown offensively, seven straight quarters this season, surrendered three in the fourth quarter. Now they'd like to go back to doing what they've done so well all year, which is bend but not break, force a field goal, and give the offense a chance to win it with a touchdown. Of course, while the defensive coaches work to stop Nevada, the planning continues with the Bronco offensive coaches trying to formulate their efforts when they get the football. Vargas on third down. Lots of time. 
rolling from pressure, chased by Gilkey. Hit as he throws, throws it away, fourth down, Wolfpack. So the Bronco defense does its job. Nevada will have to settle for a field goal. Kevin McKelvey comes on, and it will be, well, he's, he's at the 20, he's at the 19 yard line, step forward one. It'll be a 29 yard field goal attempt. Kelvey kicking out of Williamson's hold. Kick is, he missed the field goal. Someone got a hand on it. I'm not sure if we've got it on replay, but this Bronco team, which unofficially leads the nation in kick blocks, has done it again. The ball doesn't get there. Watch it fade right and miss by that much. Now, the Bronco offense at the 25, they are 42 yards out for a Mike Black field goal. So I don't think you're going to see anything risky from the Broncos on offense. You got Chris Thomas and Tinkstad in there. The handoff to Tinkstad for five to the 20 yard line. Mike Black loosening up on the sideline. And now Skip Hall goes to him and says, I want you now. Black stretching a couple more times. The Broncos are well within range. A field goal wins it. Mike Black moving up now. I thought Hall had called him out immediately, but he just said, get ready formation now for the Broncos. Hand off to Thomas, powers it into the 18-yard line. Third down. And you get a look at what Chris Thomas is facing, and the most important thing there is to wrap up the football and hang on. Now the Broncos go to a wide receiver formation. Thomas comes out, Sheldon Forehand is in. The running backs, you got the trip, the stacked eye. Bart Hull is the eye back, and Bart hangs on. Nevada stops, and now it'll be Mike Black's chance. Bart Hull wrapped up the football, didn't care about the yardage once the uh, hits were made and he was wrapped up. He just wanted to hang on to the ball. Mike Black will try a 37-yard field goal and if successful, the Broncos will play for the national championship next week in Statesboro, Georgia. Scott Russell snapping, Terry Hefner holding, Mike Black kicking. He missed. We go to another overtime. Ooh. Let's not forget these are 18, 19, 20 year old kids and if you want to talk about pressure, few of us have ever had any more pressure on us in our lives than that little guy just had and Nevada's kicker Kevin McKelvey as well. Second overtime coming up. And Nevada has the choice of possession, and they will elect to play defense first this time. So the Broncos now trying to break the scoring tie on offense. Halliday to throw. Complete hit as he threw. Second and ten. Give you another look at it. Halliday got some pressure, tried to roll away from it, and couldn't get away. 
incomplete. Second and 10, ball at the 25-yard line. Sheldon Forehand comes wide to the near side. Winky White is wide at the top of the screen. Tinkstad and Thomas are the eye backs. Halliday has Winky, gets a block, takes it inside the 15, down the sideline, out of bounds, and flung to the ground. Certainly has first down yardage and didn't like the way he was treated there, but no flag thrown. Give you another look from ground level as Winky comes across from right to left in front of you. Had Tinkstad in front of him. Out of bounds right there. Popped by Kevin Sims. First and goal, Broncos at the eight yard line. Halliday to throw. Gets protection. Over the middle, caught to the goal line. <laughs> that, that little guy's really done it all today, hadn't he? Winky White trying to keep a great career from ending here in Reno, Nevada. Has taken the Broncos to the goal line, where it'll be second down. The wide receivers check out. The tight ends come in, and the Broncos will have three tight ends in there. Russ Lindsley. The sophomore, or excuse me, redshirt uh, freshman out of Grangeville. His parents, Tom and Judy, I'm not sure if they're here or not, but I know his brother Jeff's a nervous guy up in the uh, press box. Chris Thomas on second down doesn't get in. And it'll be third and goal. Jeff Lindsley, of course, was a great tight end for the Broncos and now a graduate assistant coach with the Broncos as his little brother, little brother, 6'4", 230, works at tight end. The Broncos again with double tight ends, Stainer and Lindsley, the power formation, Tinkstad and Ryan Teal. Bart Hull will carry. Touchdown, Broncos! Boise State takes the lead, 51-45. Mike Black will try to add the conversion kick. Short yardage. Tough up front. The Bronco offensive line gives Bart Hull just enough room. Remember to stay with us for the New Center 7 weekend report. Following very closely on what is soon to become a four-hour game if we don't resolve it. Mike Black out of Terry Hefner's hole. Kick is perfect, and the Broncos lead by seven, and the only way they can lose it in this overtime is if Nevada would score and go for the very risky two-point conversion. I wouldn't say they wouldn't after what we've seen here today. Now the Broncos back on defense. Needing to stop Nevada. And the Wolfpack will be in four down territory on every possession. First and 10 at the 25 yard line. Not much there. Four. If you're wondering, the Broncos' 52 points isn't even close to the all-time record. In fact, they scored 56 against Nevada Reno in 1972, but the record is 74 against Humboldt State in 1986. 52-45, we are in the second overtime. Vargas under a rush has Ross Ortega. First down inside the 10. They just keep coming. Give you another look now. Big rush. Vargas flushed out. 
Tony Hernandez coming, throws it low in a great catch there by Ortega. Tim Langens now has to stop him, keep him out of the end zone. First and goal, Nevada. Ball at the eight-yard line. They won in three overtimes last week over Furman. Vargas looking back for Benning. Touchdown, Nevada. Now the all-important conversion. Kevin McKelvey is out, lining himself up. And they are choosing not to attempt a two-point conversion, but settle for a tie again. And in this upcoming, what would be the upcoming third overtime, the Broncos would have the choice of going first or last. Kick is good, and we are tied at 52. This is the game that won't die, the season that won't end for one of these teams. One will leave a lot of heart, a lot of soul on this field today. Both teams giving everything they've got. And then some. They've been at it for three hours and 48 minutes. Huge emotional swings, especially in this second half. Still tied at 52. Same exact scenario that uh, Nevada used to beat Furman last week. They Neither team scored in the first overtime. Both scored in the second overtime, and there they went to three. Nevada now with first possession, first and ten. That's Tremel Taylor in motion. Vargas rolling toward the motion. Delivers it. Ortega out of bounds at the 18 yard line. Gain of seven. Give you another uh, couple of particulars on the rules as they were discussed last night with the NCAA uh, representative, Commissioner Ron Stevenson, and the, uh, the big the game officials. If there should be a penalty against the defense after a score, it would be assessed from the 25, but the yardage on offense would never be more than first and 10. Just something to think about. As if you didn't have plenty here on second and two. Ray Whale. First down, close to the 10. They'll mark it at the 11-yard line. Third overtime. Longest the Broncos have ever played in school history. First and 10. Ball at the 12. This is Whalen. Tripped up and down at the 9-yard line. Boy, Commissioner Ron Stevenson's already shared with us his thought that this is the greatest game in conference history. Two Big Sky members playing for the right to compete for the national championship next week. Second down and six, the ball at the eight-yard line. Vargas to Whalen. Touchdown, Nevada. Wolfpack take a six-point lead. Kevin McKelvey now trying to make it seven. Then the Broncos will have a chance to come back and answer with one of their own. Of course, the conversion is extremely important. High snap. Kick is good. 59-52. Nevada leads. Boise State going back on offense at the 25-yard line. They must score and convert to win. That to 
tie and get a fourth overtime. Must score and go for two to win in this overtime, should they choose to try that. The, the crowd a huge factor now. On its feet, roaring defense, defense. Broncos at the 25 with double tight ends. Winky White and Terry Hefner, the wide guys. Pervert Halliday to throw. He's buried at the 30. Halliday down under the heavy rush at the 30-yard line. Broncos will lose five on first down. The, the, they set everybody that time. The blocking wasn't there. Second and 15. Broncos must reach the 15-yard line to keep the drive alive. Sheldon forehand, wide left, Winky white, wide right. And confusion, and the Broncos will lose five more on a procedure penalty. Movement without the ball snap. Another procedure. Second and 20 from the 35. We are in the third overtime of this one double A semifinal game. White and Hefner, the wide man, Holiday to throw under a heavy rush with a screen pass for Chris Thomas. Breaks it inside. Gets outside and down at the 25. He got the penalty yardage back. And the Broncos will have third and 10. And of course, it's two down territory because a field goal doesn't help. Thomas very nearly was able to elude that last tackler and keep his balance. Got the screen. You see Ramos 79, Giacomazzo 73. Chris spins and goes down at the 25. This is where they started this possession. Third and 10. Throws low, forehand can't make the catch. He didn't have anywhere close to first down yardage. And the Broncos are down to fourth down. They must get to the 15-yard line or this one's over. There is one timeout available to each team in each overtime with no carryover. The Broncos have just used theirs for this period. Fifty nine fifty two Nevada. Jim Zorn working with. Dwayne Halliday and what a story it's been for Dwayne Halliday this afternoon off the bench for an ineffective Mike Verdon middle of the second quarter through three touchdown passes set up a fourth with a long completion injured late in the game. Replaced by Mike Verdon for one pass, a completion to Ryan Teal that tied things in the final minute of the fourth quarter. Neither team scored. Both missed field goals in the first extra period. The Broncos scored first. Nevada answered back in the second. Nevada has a touchdown and conversion kick here in the third overtime. The Broncos are facing fourth and ten.